Salmonella did a video about odd things that have happened to corpses throughout the years, and mm. one of the things he brought up was some man's corpse being ultimately sold to a carnival that would use it in a haunted or, or scary house. And there's actually something interesting that ties in there. One of the gentlemen who eventually brought out the concept of He-Man back in the early 80s with Mattel, as a child, went to that carnival and was scared so badly by that thing we found out was a real corpse. That was the basis for Skeletor. That makes okay. so much sense. Okay, this is a fascinating piece of lore that I had no idea of. And with this beautiful tidbit, hello and welcome everybody to the Awkward <laughs> Cast. A and Y and Keyframe wonder about random drivel. And today with us, uh, at least the voice and the self-portrait of Leo Convoy. Welcome to the show, okay. Leo. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate you uh, honoring me by bringing me on your show. I pity both of you for being foolish enough to do so. <laughs> we, oh, we, no. We, if the pre-show is anything to go by, this is going to be a great show. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, yeah, Leo, uh, um, since, especially since you're not uh, uh, part of our origin fandom, to keep it unnamed, uh, uh, many people might be wondering who you are, what you do, and why people should care. Okay. So please enlighten you? us. I am, who I am, uh, I go by the moniker of Lyle Convoy. I've done so since around 1997 or 1999. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, my name comes from a Transformer from the Beast Wars 2 animated series in Japan. He's a truck-sized lion with a golden mane. And what I do on the internet, it varies. I do art. I talk about random situations. I have my own goofy little YouTube channel where I cover Gosh. anything from random 80s trivia to... I'm, I'm kind of the only channel that even talks about Thundercats. And uh, sometimes I have to put out videos about Predators because, you know, somebody's got to. Uh, but why should they care? Well, it varies. If you like talking about animation, if you like talking about things from the 80s or you value things like that, uh, then you probably should care. Just, just be aware I don't censor my opinions and I'm not here to make brands happy. And I am, I'm certainly not here to tout uh, general favorable lines. <laughs> Oh, I, I love that. Everybody yeah. loves my heads of Squidward stuff for some unholy reason. The internet loves it, and the government has stopped has not yet stopped my sinful hands. Uh, Nickelodeon hasn't come knocking on your yeah. door, being like, "We're going to either kill you or hire you. You get to pick." But yeah, since, since I see the Darkwing ones when you posted them in Discord uh, a while back, I was like, "Wait, that's what you just drew?" Because I would say that's that's still pretty awesome shit. Thank you. Uh, I, can't take, I, I can't take full credit simply because it's an homage piece. So things like composition and posing were clearly already done for me. My, tr my trouble was making sure I could try to translate that. Because while Darkwing Duck is based on a lot of pulp characters like the Shadow and Batman, he himself is not really dark. So how do I, how do, I do the Nightfall series? With a character a bit more bright and happy with Darkwing Duck, well... I take from the show and what I do with that is there's a there's a character in the show called Dark Warrior Duck for one episode called Time and Punishment which was based on Frank Miller's Dark Knight mm. series and uh, Mad Max that uh, the creator Darkwing Duck put into an episode I'm like alright so if Darkwing Duck doesn't really have an Asriel who's the more violent character well this alternate version of Darkwing Duck is now I don't write stories for any of this it's not fanfic I don't do that but I figured if I'm going to do these homages I'm going to try to make them work as best I can and while I enjoyed some of what I did, I'm, I'm, of course, an artist. So now I'm seeing where I really goofed up. Like the image is currently on here. I really goofed on where the light source is. So these are things I'm trying to keep in mind going forward. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's good, but it is, it's still not your magnum opus. This isn't stays here, so... Yeah, that that it, the, the, handsome, the handsome Squidward face actually started when I decided to very first... Do an Inktober challenge because I've, I've been getting back into art. I, I put it aside for the better part of a decade of my life because of work. And somebody said, I want you to draw Inuyasha. And I'm okay with Inuyasha. My wife loves the series. But I'm like, I've got to do something with this. So I made a handsome Squidward Inuyasha. And ever since then, people have been begging me for stuff like that. So, <laughs> besides... Besides reveling about Darkwing Duck and Handsome Squidward, what things have been going on in your life recently that you'd like to share? Any cool life stories you'd like to spin a tale of for us? Well, I mean, I went to BronyCon and I got to hit creepy reading with a stun gun. That was fun. Okay, can, okay. 
I saw the video. Wait. <laughs> so, did, did you hit him like with the with the actual gun, or did you shoot him? There's two different no, no. verbs using that, here. Actually, that's a taser. I found out a taser is the type of of gun-like mechanism that shoots out prongs. That's only certified for police officers. I could not own one. A stun gun, oddly enough, despite looking nothing like a gun, is a little zappy thing. He goes, Bzz, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at first, like it was about six months ago, I was joking around with Creepy. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna wrestle you at BronyCon. He's like, well, if you pay me, I will. So we agreed to that. But then when I got to BronyCon, I looked at Creepy. I'm like, dude, I, I don't mean this to be insulting or anything. I don't mean this to to two mile horn, but I, I'd actually be scared of hurting you. So what else can we do here? And I'm wearing this full full body Batman outfit, and I'm like, all right, I have an idea. If you're if you're keen to it, like, how about we do something involving this? And I showed him I have a stun gun. He's like, all right, let's do this. You pay me, we're gonna do the stun gun thing, and you'll put it on Twitter, and you can use it in a video or something you want. And that's how I wound up in a Batman costume, hitting that creepy reading with a stun gun, apparently right on his nipple. You cattle prod the poor boy. I think I've seen this thing now. Wait, is, is this video on Twitter? Because I have been, oh, because I have seen it on a phone before it was public. Uh, I mean, I, I think that was maybe the one brony con thing I ever watched. It was you <laughs> <laughs> treating him like a cow with a fucking cattle prod. Well, the kick, the funny thing about this is after that went out, because at that time my Twitter was down due to uh, mm. me hurting the feelings of horrible people. Mm -hmm. Somebody thought I was brawny. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he he's also a guy who is uh, uh, going around with a strong st strong guy image, and you, yeah, he likes to Leo, wear costumes. Leo, Leo has hair, and Bronny does not. <laughs> it was a Batman fairness, costume. I, I, was, I was in the Batman costume, and I was doing the Batman voice. That's probably oh, okay. why they thought it was Bronny. Okay. So, see, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant, like, out of costume. Like, this is, that's, like, on the level of people calling Kermit and Fozzie identical twins. <laughs> like, like... No. One's Mexican and one's brawny. <laughs> so, <laughs> brawny doesn't have an ethnicity. He just kind of came into the world from some kind of singular entity. <laughs> you know, I've, actually had, I've actually had friends uh, in my real life. Like one day I was uh, taking a friend of mine to College Station, but on the way there I'm like, hey, I got to stop by my mom's workplace and hand off something for her. And he looked at me and said, you don't have a mom. Wow. What? Like, you came from the mountains, don't you lie to me. <laughs> and another dude hey, like, you know what? Thank you're, you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Leo, and by proxy, Leo's friend. You just made me fucking spit up rainbow unicorn energy drink all over myself. Oh, oh fantastic. I'm... But aside from that, I've also had another friend just uh, go on his long diatribe explaining how I don't really exist. I'm just everybody's imaginary friend. I'm a... This is what that guy does to me. No. He has... <laughs> For years, he has said that everything in my life, everyone in it, him included, is I'm just in a mental yes. ward, and he is a figment of my imagination. Exactly, and Brett is your your male nurse, and Lauren is probably your doctor or something. But yes, uh, I have one more fun friend thing, and ties into where yeah. I come from. Because I'm yeah. from like the five man band that might be the Thundercats fandom, right? That's where I hail from. That and Transformers. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there years ago watching the Thundercats reboot. And we're just watching it. This friend of mine, his name is Kubak, or he goes by Kubak online. Great guy, a lot of fun to have around. He's the most chill, bearded dude you'll ever meet. And we're sitting there watching it, and he just turns to me, doesn't say anything beforehand, just deadpan. I just found out why they call that character Tiger. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, really? He's like, no, no, no. I, I knew why they called her Chitara and him Lino, but they call him a Tiger. You call him Tiger because he's a Tiger. I just found that out. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah uh, in, in in different news i found the video all right so here's 30 seconds to calm down yep. by watching creepy reading getting tased by batman oh we still lost keyframe <laughs> and there he goes down Oh, okay. Welcome back to Keyframe. Because he's 
Because he's a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. Why did that... Sometimes the dumbest things in life breaks you. I think it was that moment where I realized there's someone in life that could have that moment of stupidity. Yeah, because yeah, the thing is, he's a really bright guy and just out of freaking nowhere. Uh, no, now. That's like a theoretical fear theist being like, wait, they called him Dash in, in The Incredibles because he has super speed. Correct. Whoa. Oh, my God. Okay, so is there any other stories you'd like to give, or should we pass the mic on to someone else? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, I, I have a, uh, one story, if you guys want to hear it, about the first time I scared the living piss out of a man in a bat suit. Sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and share this, and I'll pass the mic happily. Um, there is this young man who would appear at some friend of mine's parties, and he'd tend to... Uh, Get drunk and damage property that was not his. Hmm. Well, these friends, of mine were, these, these friends of mine were having their 21st birthday party, and they asked me to be something of the bouncer there because uh, I look like I want to chew glass all the time. So this individual, they called him the gnome because he was short and looked like a gnome. He decided he would get drunk early, and I was asked to take care of that issue, and they asked me to do it in a very vibrant way. So I bring the bat costume I had at the time. And what I did was I put it on and I got on the roof. And the plan was to jump down on this guy in front of everybody. But he wound up going into the garage. Now, when you go into the garage at this point, because it was a party, there was a couch by the door. And the couch would face where the projector was launching on. They played garage band. So he goes into the garage and I see him do that. So I climb down. Now, when I walked in, or when I went into the garage, I noticed that he had his back to the couch because he was trying to uh, make moves on a young lady verbally and mm. i crouched down behind the couch and then i slowly rose up because the girl was facing the couch and he was away from it i put my i put my finger to my lips telling her to be quiet and i pointed towards the door and she took off running and when she did he turned after was like what you doing babe where are you going i picked the man up lift him above <laughs> the couch like where are the drugs what are you doing he starts shaking he starts screaming <laughs> put him down dude runs out of the garage and I didn't find out till later on when I talked to him a few years ago. It's like, hey, you remember uh, remember that time we were at the twins' house and Batman scared you? He was like, all I remember is getting scared out of my mind and I have not drank since then. <laughs> I scared Ooh. a man into sobriety. This, this is impressive indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that guy's doing with life anymore, but at least he's not drinking. That's the important thing. That, that seems about right. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, uh, so let's think. Anything interesting going on in my life in recent history? Um, ever since this this person uh, took took the plane home, uh, not too much. Oh no, actually, no stuff did happen. Stuff did happen. Yeah, I, didn't you go to a summer event or something? Yes, on I Thursday? did go to a summer event on Thurs from Thursday to Friday. So uh, my company has a tradition to. Uh, my company likes to celebrate, so I believe we have a Christmas party, a birthday party for the company, and a summer event. Yeah. Um, nicely spread out over the year. So the birthday is somewhere in spring, and summer event, well, it was last week. And uh, I have the mark to prove it, because we, among others... Oh, this actually oh, this actually becomes nicely visible in the camera light. Uh, Did you hurt yourself, or is that sunburn? No, I hurt myself. Uh, oh, okay, oh. please tell this story, dear. I'm, oh, yes, I'm, I'm concerned so, and intrigued. So, uh, uh, we, we have some kind of uh, Olympics or, or games when we uh, at the at the play at the resort where we oh, go. No, That's not a, a real resort. Uh, this so, is a good start. So, it, oh, it starts even better. So, we're all getting on the train. Uh, mm -hmm. Not the train, the bus. We have a bus. We're all getting on the bus, and uh, it starts with... Try what? What did the organizer say through the microphone to the bus? Try to be mostly sober. People who were still completely sober were like, "Okay, I can get to mostly sober in time." <laughs> we actually had a bus stop on our way there, where some people they, they actually actively talked the driver or the organizers into holding at a rest place at the at the uh, autobahn uh, uh, to run in there to the uh, uh, gas station and get overpriced beer for everybody and I just heard uh, the guy who, who did the purchase he said behind me in the bus like oh my god I believe this was the most expensive beer I ever bought for the company 
like 80 bucks for, for, for a bottle of beer for everybody. Where the, okay, <laughs> where in the hell did you guys go? What surveys charges that much? Or was there like an actual nice liquor store? I, 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 mean, I, I, I mean, we are like, uh, uh, there were probably 80, 80 people around uh, on this bus, so... Okay, that means it's a dollar a beer. It can't be that expensive. I don't know. Anyway, so so we, we, we got there. Everybody with at least one beer into us. I, I know that uh, there were pictures. We had an app to share pictures for this event. I know that uh, basically the moment we entered the bus, a picture of uh, shorts, of little little short bottles, appeared on, <laughs> on this app. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I it's love my good. company. So yeah, yeah, we arrive there where we have to be mostly sober due to safety reasons. And we start this uh, 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 games and uh, my safety team... Safety reasons. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, it even hurts a little bit when I tap it. Okay, can please continue the story. Stop hurting yourself. Well, our first station was bow and arrow. And well, when the string, uh, uh, whatever you call the string or the bow, um, the... the, 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 the the string on a bow. Is it just called string? Uh, there, there is a more technical word for it, but I get what you mean. Okay, so this, basically the thing is, I mean, the instructor was like, hey, careful, try to at least do a little bit of an angle, otherwise the yeah. string hits. Bow string, it is called a bow string. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> otherwise it might hit your under, uh, your lower arm and then you get a bruise. Uh, oh, yeah. So out of, I, I believe I had three training shots and two uh, two counting shots. Uh, obviously, the training shots were all better than the counting shots. Um, one out of those, only one of those five hit me. Ow! I should really stop tapping it. Stop touching it! <laughs> No, no, no keyframe. He's got to learn on his own. No, it's like the fucking episode of Simpsons where, like, uh, like Lisa's, Lisa's researching with the, with a the hamster, hamster and Bart, and Bart keeps touching the thing that keeps shocking him when the hamster, when it gets shocked one stop. Stop it! Fascinatingly, <laughs> fascinatingly enough, the purple point is not the one that hurts the most. The kind of greenish point here is... Yeah. <laughs> And that's because the purple point is where the most damage was, and then in the middle of repairing it, the outer yeah, the points are where your nerve endings are. Severed. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Uh, any, anyway, so but we we had uh, 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 bowstring. We had another one with uh, um, basically a crane thing. You have a wooden piece in the middle. Everybody has strings around it, and there's a little bit of a crane, and you need to pick up wooden blocks and uh, stack them on top of each other to get points. Uh, 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 sand, throw. They're really, really creative games, I have to say. Uh, um, one way you just throw a ha haggy sex over a distance into a little goal thing, which still, for a company event, was a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, then we had one where you ba basically in a giant wooden A, which had four ropes attached to it, and one was in the string, tried to move to a parkour, and the other guys were trying to, to keep him from falling over because it was an A with only two points, so it was basically mm -hmm. two-dimensional. Um Mostly sober. Yeah, I know. Then we had a uh, then we had a waiter game. So with running around with a tablet with stuff. This is kind of traditional because we are related to the gastronomy industry. Um, but yeah, those were the games. So oh oh oh, I forgot the I forgot the worst one. Another one with a weird wooden construct you get on your back, a form of a backpack, and you have like a puppeteer two strings to hold a platform in front of you, and in the middle of the platform is a gl uh, is a is a glass. With either beer or water, and you <laughs> try to get this thing only with those puppeteer things in front of yourself, and grab it and try to drink it. At uh, this point, this sounds like what they do during co during fraternity house hazings, so less like, like a summer event like, for like, a seriously. gastronomy company. <laughs> My job's idea of like workplace stuff like that is like, oh, we're gonna go to a baseball game, which I never go to, like. This man is actually having fun doing different activities. Like, is it a great working for a German startup? Like, come on now. <laughs> no, I mean uh, to 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 close this one off. So, me, our CPO and chief product, no, chief revenue, CRO. Sorry, me, our CRO, and um, basically our head of auger, uh, uh, where. All in this team, we're all doing the drinking thing, and we all threw up from beer because we exited. We, we tried to chuck it so much because we got points. We had a score. We had like three minutes and uh, tried to uh, empty as many of those glasses as possible. So it was basically like, one more, one more. Okay, time over. 
<laughs> I I'm so happy to hear that particular story. Because this feels like retroactive karma for I, something. I, I, <laughs> true story. True story. <laughs> I, I mean, I chucked like two two uh, nah what one two two somewhere between one and two liters of beer in uh, 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 three minutes. So. <laughs> Two liters of beer. It reminds me of a story from far back, but not with beer. With a similar, with, probably just as coke. dangerous liquid. With coke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, beside, uh, after that, we had a nice party. There was a beautiful lake there. Like, uh, 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 I mean, the lake was mediocre, but it was beautiful. It was warm, and uh, it had a little bit of... Um, uh, 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 a wooden wooden platform into the water so you could jump a, into a, a, board, a boardwalk <laughs> yeah ba basically so so you could really just run and jump in it and uh, it was water temperature that you could just go in without issues not like an ocean or something and uh hmm? oh yes oh yes samus samus i did as you can see oh yeah, yeah. Uh, there if, it is. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, real quick, I got something to say about Samot here. Just oh. kind of, kind of eerie. All right, so Samot's one of the first people that I just ran into here in terms of that community. That he's one of the first people who didn't immediately make me absolutely livid. So I get <laughs> that talking. That community. <laughs> yeah. So I get, I get talking to him, and dude's old school like me, likes Voltron like I do. We both have lion avatars and exist in that sort of realm. And I just found out recently he's four years older than me. But he was born one day after I was. I'm at this point. I'm wondering if all my more uh, benevolent nature somehow got transferred into Samot before I was born, <laughs> and that's just that's just our <laughs> dynamic. No, look, okay, okay, Tim. I have a theory about people. Sometimes I have many theories. Uh, some would say that I am the leader of tinfoil hats, but no, they mess with my hair. Uh, I have a theory that people who are very similar to you but are older than you are actually you from the future that traveled back in time mm -hmm. to retroactively influence you to become that person. But how? I just met him a couple years ago. It's the long game, man. <laughs> Think about Endgame. Think about Endgame. Obviously, what has happened, what is our current present is what has been affected by people who are using time travel. We don't know what the present would have been if they didn't. What they have already done have already affected us right now. So he probably this just is did the literally long game the travel. opposite. This is literally the opposite of how they explain it in uh, Endgame. I, I know ah, that's why I'm saying there, think about there is a because bigger, my explanation is better. There is a better para bigger paradox here. Oh, if I do okay. wind up going down the Samot line, I'd have to start drawing furry tits instead of Greg face and handsome Squidward face. And do we really want that? I don't know. We don't know what the future may hold. Now, I may have made this theory to annoy my friend Chris because uh, he was jealous of how cool the voice actor for Red, the Red Tallest in Invader Zim is. But I'm like, maybe <laughs> it's just you from the future that traveled back in time to be successful in the present. I can't but, remember the Red Tallest. Was that Wally uh, Wally, or... Yeah, Wally Winger. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. I met him. Oh, I met him years ah, ago. He's so cool. But yeah, continue your story. Uh, apparently, I ah, damn it! I want to find something. Can I find it in time? Scrolling, do scrolling. Want, do you want us to stall? Uh, while it is still relevant. I mean, you can, you can, we can stall if you want, but I'm not the one dressing oh, dragon oh. hula. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 Leo, uh, not Leo, Samus, Samus, the other guy. He, I have a great idea for a shadow box. Oh, no. <laughs> God, why? <laughs> the worst part is, with the geometric shapes on Handsome Squidward, I can see how this could be achieved as a shadow box. You need to make the eyes sunken in, Sam, so the eyes follow you as you walk around. <laughs> the sad thing is, people have done several bits of merchandise. There is a Handsome Squidward face dress out there. I know. I've seen these things. I go on Redbubble. Also, Sam says it can be done. Yes! And glow in the dark! <laughs> oh, no! Whether it's, whether it's the eyes or the arrow, it is your creative freedom, Sam. The, the, <laughs> the chest pieces are on your side of the board. <laughs> Ah, uh, beautiful, you, beautiful. Can yes. Continue next. Um, uh, just beautiful lake. I had so much fun, and I remembered how much I like swimming. Even so, the 
Even though the water was kind of gross, I really noticed it when I came out and went to my uh, hotel room to take a shower and all the grass and goo came off me and yeah. I'm like, oh boy. Uh, we, the we, lakes. Yeah, we, uh, um, in the evening we had a fun party where I was uh, uh, very soon one of the more sober people and at the same time one of the most crazy people because dance floor. Uh, well, you don't need booze to be crazy. In fact, booze thing. calms you down. I, it does, like, doesn't it? He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a sleepy drunk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually don't drink. Uh, I refuse to. Yeah. I don't know. I don't For two reasons. Number one, uh, I'm, I'm very theologically inclined. But also, I don't know what type of drunk I'd be. And God help us if I'm a violent one. Mm. So I try to spare everyone from that. Fair. But Fair uh, Max, uh, is archery something that you've had an interest in or plan on taking up in the future? Um... I mean, I, I don't dislike it. Uh, I don't have any. I, I, I have. I had a bow in, the, in my hand before. Uh, in my hands before years back when I was at some kind of adventure trip in Norway, and uh, it's it's something that I haven't considered as uh, to, to to be a bigger hobby. Uh, why are you asking? But but I'm not because uninterested. Because you got the injury from doing archery. Oh, correct. And if you're going to go forward with that, uh, simply due to the fact that those things are inevitable. In mm -hmm. any form of, of weapon training, I've gotten, Lord knows, my fair share of bruises and swordsmanship. But if you're going to stick with archery, then I'd recommend getting a good van brace. Oh, that's probably for, for the... On. Yes, it yeah. covers it up properly. At, in time, you'll learn and be able to do it with muscle memory without even worrying about hurting yourself. But if you're new, that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, Leo, 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 advice. you don't need any protection for sports. I mean, look at me. I played soccer for years. I was the head goalie of my team, and I got hit in the head with multiple soccer balls, half intentionally, half not, and I turned out just fine. Did I mention that I started playing soccer when I was seven? Uh. Uh, nah. <laughs> I, used, I used to be of that mindset until I started doing HEMA, and there was a gentleman that I sparred with whose name is Sam Street, and Sam was one of the top fencers in the world in terms of longsword. And Did he die? I used, no, no, he's, he's. I just don't know where he ranks now. But when I was first learn, learning German longsword, I I wanted to stick with cheaper equipment because ah, I can take it. I'm tough. And what happened is one day, while I'm sparring with Sam, I know that his le his leg is open, so I go to cut to his leg. And at that moment, I realize I have made a grave mistake because that's when I see his sword come down onto my helmet. And Ooh. this man hit me so hard and so fast. Just so you're aware, for for sparring, we start with nylon which mm -hmm. is a very strong plastic. He hit me so hard and so fast, I could smell burnt nylon. And he hit okay, me- Okay, okay, moving on, moving on. I don't want to hear the rest of this story. No, no. There's no major injuries, there's no major injuries. But after, after I hit the ground and I sat there for a while like, huh, maybe I should start taking safety a little more seriously because I, no, not doing that again. I'm not making that mistake a second time. So yeah, safety always is a good idea regardless of what you do. Despite oh. the fact that I tend to really tend to generally be like, screw pain. I tell my body what to do, not the other way around. Yeah! <laughs> yeah I, I learned my safety lesson also years, years back. Uh, uh, I, I had discovered the beauty of rollerblading. And uh, I, I, in the boarding school where I was living, there was some kind of pass that went, where's the camera, that went down and around a curve. And I had learned from skiing that you have to do this banana in order to not uh, uh, get too quick. So I, 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 I was on the top of this hill, I took a first step, whee, straight down. <laughs> is, that, is this the story of when you broke, when you got like no, that no. hairline fracture and your, no, that was your the, bike, that was your bike. Yeah, pro, yeah, oh yeah, I, I, that, that was bike. No, it, I recall that somebody came up the pass and, and, and saw me speeding down and he was like, you need to bre do do the bre uh, the, the, the brake thing like like the recommendation of the do the slalom thing and I'm like I try <laughs> <laughs> and, and well at some point this road which was an asphalt road turned it get got a little bit of a hobble and then turned into basically a, a, a gravel road so I get there, I get closer to it, I do one step, tap, 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 and then I don't know how many, how often I fall over myself, but eventually I'm just sitting there like, huh, but I had elbow, uh, I had hand, elbow, and knee uh, uh, protection on, and uh, I looked at them, they were completely scratched and everything, but I was fine. So yeah, yeah, kids, wear protection. So enough PSA yes. for today. 
But yeah, you, you, you uh, uh, I told way too many in yes. stories of me getting injured. I don't need to share any. Just go back to any pa- podcast. Exactly. I, 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 <laughs> but yeah, finish your story exactly. so we can move on. Partying hard, uh, uh, the one thing I recall was that one of the newer employees was like, X. I discovered a completely new side of you. Like, like really, like, huh, because they only know me as the kind of guy who walks for coffee through the through the office and sits behind my computer, exactly. So they were like, huh, completely new person discovered. Anyways, last last thing maybe to say about this. So we had checkout at 10. Our mm-hmm. bus back was at 12 or 1, I believe. Uh, and there was still this beautiful lake that leaves you kind of gross. Of course, I went back in. With no shower afterwards? Nope. Because you're the fan, that's what we do. I mean, yeah, sure, but ew. I know. Those are living creatures that are crawling all over your body. Probably. You put an entire lake's biosystem as a paste over you. Probably, probably. So we rode back to the office, and I actually stayed a little bit in the office, and eventually I rode to Bart, my, my, my boss in Slack, because he was already home at this point. Like, Bart... The itching stars. I'm going home now. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Fantastic. Oh, and I had a brutal, brutal um, what's it, muscle ache yesterday. With one day delay, those fuckers got me again. But yeah, this, this, this was my highlight this week. Uh, anything on your end, Keyframe? Is there? I have ver- I have some. I will take up my time because you took up a lot. Uh... <laughs> It's true. Uh, Enigma so Prince is already week. angry, I assume. What? Enigma Prince is probably already angry because uh, he he was not happy last week with us going overtime with story time and doing one minute, uh, one sentence media. Well, don't worry. We're not going to go that bad. But my well, big tell, story. Tell whoever that is, he can fight me IRL. Ah, but no, my, uh, my, uh, my favorite highlight was the one, was the, the, Sprinkle on the Sunday that was my Germany trip, <laughs> which happened on Monday. Uh, so hmm. it's new. Uh, hey. So I went to lunch with this guy. Uh, okay, this is, th- there's two stories here. So I That's went to lunch direction. with this guy, and there was this place that I wanted to go to last year, but it was closed when we w- the last day that oh, I was visiting. Oh, oh, just Angry pointing, chicken. just pointing out, Enigma Prince just was like game on, Lyle. Okay, boys, boys. <laughs> You can share your you can share your Hot Wheels later. Mama's telling a story. Okay, now, <laughs> but no, um, we went to this place called Angry Chicken, which is like a Korean place, and uh, this guy is a total wimp when it comes to spice. Oh, it is a miracle that ketchup isn't too spicy for this boy. In my defense, I'm only a wimp when it comes to spice from an American point of view. Among Europeans, I'm actually. On the upper level. I like just to give context. I have tried every time we go to a restaurant or order something from takeout. I try to get the spiciest thing. And each time it's like, so is this spicy? No, it is like as mild as you can get. It's like, it, it without the flavor, it's the intensity of barbecue sauce. Like, come on now. Somebody but has like, successfully destroyed her taste buds. But continue. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, well, just fun fact. Um, when I was a kid, because this is the tangent cast. When I was a kid, me and my dad used to go to 7-Eleven after school, and I would always get a taquito, and we would both get Slurpees. And he would rant to me every time, being like, Christine, you got to stop getting the buffalo chicken taquitos. You're going to get ulcers in your stomach. Okay, Dad. <laughs> my mind's continuing to eat it. Haven't gotten an ulcer yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> but, um, no, we went to the Korean place, so he got, like, the so-so chicken, which is mild chicken and i got the and i got the furious chicken now you expect really spicy chicken to have red pepper flakes on top of it and look darker so i took that one and he took the other one that we assumed was the so-so chicken and he's sweating his nose is turning red he's blowing his nose and i'm like man you are you are weak and he's just like are you sure you have the hot one Uh, you have the my hot one (laughs) And I'm like, no, she, here, taste it. D- 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 taste it. See if it's hotter. And I tasted his, and I was like, here's the thing. I uh, Maybe I have killed all my taste buds, because to me, both of them tasted the same. But he was like, 
wait, did you really get mine? And we asked the lady and she's like, oh, the, uh, the, the so-so one has flakes on top. Oh, boy. He looks over at me and I'm just like, <laughs> so the entire time he was eating the super spicy chicken and I was eating the sweet one and I was let me show this cursed place ah wait there. angry chicken but yeah but yeah so the, that and but like and then there was karma because of course while we're inside the wasp comes near me because uh, I feel like German wasps just just choose to come near me, no matter where we go. Like, I could be in the middle of a frozen tundra, and a wasp will find me. Like cats, they they, they smell who has fear or is allergic or whatever. Yes, right. I'm allergic to things that sting, but wasps I can handle bees. Wasps, however, they have no right to exist. But like, um, besides that. After that lunch, I wanted to go and get some stuff at, uh, do a little shopping, uh, to get a couple things, and I was like, I don't want to go to Schoenhauser and all this stuff, because I needed to go to one place that wasn't going to be at Schoenhauser, because Golden Fox's mom collects Starbucks mugs that have, like, the different places that you're at on them, so I was like, I, I've been to Berlin, like seven times and I haven't gotten her one and I feel like at some point when I w reach visit 20 she's going to start to get mad so might as well get it now um so I went to Alexander Plotz which is like this big mall shopping center area and he left we're not going to continue the cast until he comes back Welcome back to the show. Anyways, so... Uh, you already told me the story. I thought now I is the best time to I get know. more to drink. It's hot again. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. But no, um, so at Alexander, besides the fact that I made a dog bark all the way down to the end of the my earshot, and I was like, I don't think that dog stopped barking. I think I just went far away enough from the dog. It was like a crazy dachshund. <laughs> Um, but there was like someone doing a giant spray paint thing and I was like, oh, cool. So I was just watching. And then I noticed a camera crew next to him. I'm like, okay. Didn't acknowledge the camera crew, just continue watching. And the director comes over and he's like, hey, so you like this? And I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, I love spray paint and graffiti type artwork stuff. It, I used to grow up in near Brooklyn in the Bronx. So I see this stuff all the time. You're from New York? And I'm like, well, yeah, kind of grew up there and then moved to California and all that stuff. Do you want to be in our documentary? <laughs> movie sure, star. Sure, why movie not? Movie star, oh, oh, oh. Now, keep in mind, I had this hair, so not dyed hair. Um, well, needs to be redyed hair. And my Eurofurn shirt. Mm. Oh, <laughs> just, Lord. just stand, just kind of like... I, mean, I guess this is happening today. I mean, this year's Eurofern shirt was okay and actually... I think it's still just the This thing shirt of, is worse than this year's Eurofern shirt. I mean, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, did, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't exactly looking like someone who was ready to go on camera. Unless I'm just that photogenic in their opinion. But like, <laughs> they, yeah, they just started interviewing me and it was nice the only weird thing was they kept being like so you are from new york and i was like yes 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 so and i feel like during this entire thing they said new york like 12 times and i'm like you're doing a you're doing a documentary about alexander plotz in berlin not new york stop asking me about new york but it was nice and now Eventually, I'm going to be in some German documentary. <laughs> we bet we don't know which one. I, I'll, I'll look, look, I doubt there's many documentaries specifically about Alexander Plotz. So. so I'll figure it out then. And then I just was like, okay, that happened. I'm going to the mall. <laughs> and you this got, was before I went shopping. And you, so, got, and you finally got the mug. I finally got the mug. And then um, I made someone's worst day ever at the mall because there was this person who's like, 
was pot was trying to p- bum off like hair straighteners like a one of those not, not they don't sell them they were like doing demonstrations and they were like you you come here and i was like oh okay i'm gonna straighten your hair they straighten oh, no. one chunk out of my giant fringe and i'm like oh thanks that's not gonna look weird you can at least do the whole thing if you're gonna fuck up my hair why well, don't and they're like, those clowns I don't even, like, I don't, look, here's the thing, I think, I don't think weirdos get attracted to me, I think I attract weirdness, so it's just like, I am a magnet, and whatever radiation field that I admit, just, they get drawn in like the mice to the Pied Piper. Hey, keyframe. (sighs) What? Well, with all the weirdness, you better get deal to it, deal with it. Oh, my deal with the glasses are in the living room. I felt I felt part of my soul die <laughs> right there. Yeah, I, I I mean I can take them off. I can take them off, put them away, and use the digital uh, ones. Where are they? Why are they not coming in? <laughs> there, yeah, deal with it. The worst part is he has the same amount of pride even when he fucks it up. <laughs> <laughs> the art of but, fucking it up. <laughs> But no, see the pro. The, hey, hey, Leo, the, Leo. Oh no! Oh no! I'm actually a year older than you. I'm your elder. You have to look up to me. No, no, I have to respect you. There's nothing that says I have to look up. To Touche. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. If you beat me in arm wrestling, I'll look up to you. I won't, but we can still try. Sorry, Keyframe, you're sorry. <laughs> now here's the thing. This is a reason that I think subconsciously Max knows that he that you don't have to look up to him. Because he called himself elder and not your superior. Anyways, sorry, but, ah. But besides that, life has just been generally chill in, in Chrissy land of getting home. Okay, there was, let me just say two things. I love the airline that I went on. That, that says nothing about the other people that use the airline. Because, and this is excluding the fact that I found another reason why TXL is one of the fucking worst airports. In the sense of, they did the bag check an hour before my plane had to leave, and then they waited until the entire bag check was done to make the line to go through security. I think I texted Max being like, this is the security line. I have like 20 minutes before my flight takes off. Oh. <laughs> it mean, was, that, that was fun. I mean, in this case, it's basically the entire passenger ship, whatever. So, I get that, but it's still annoying. No, yeah, of course it is. I mean, but, that, that, that's just systematically being laid. Yeah, but then besides that, so I had a layover in Helsinki because I used Finnair. I feel like the entire population of Tokyo was in that airport. <laughs> no, because there was just a weird influx. Like, I didn't see any European people. I didn't see any Americans when you ha- I went through the passport check it was a, all Asians. And not like <laughs> oh, Asian Americans or Asian Europeans. Because I kept seeing their, like, because I would see in my peripheral vision their WhatsApps or whatever or things like that. And I don't like looking at that, first of all. So that's just great. It was all in Chinese or Korean. So it's like of Korean symbols. And I, I one moment had to like walk over to one of the health people being like, so this is the line for also American passports. They're like, yes, yes, yes. And I'm just sitting there in this crowd where they have one person running the passport line. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss my flight. I'm going to have better luck getting a flight to Tokyo than I'm going to have a flight getting back home. But that because, of course, like they always do with connections, they put your connection on the other end of the goddamn airport. Cool. Cool. But, I mean, and then, you know, besides that, I had an aisle seat for once, which I'm like, okay, fine, cool. There was a couple next to me. This couple decided that it's fun to play wrestle on an airplane. Hmm. So they're, like, jabbing at each other and pushing at each other. And, you know, and it's like, you know what, that's cute and charming when you're by yourself. Not when you're on a small airplane row and you're moving all the seats. I just want to watch Lego Movie 2 in peace. Can you let me have that? 
Well, that's when you just reach over and you get one of them into a chokehold until they tap out to teach them a lesson. Hmm. Yeah, but Leo, no matter what waters you're over, no matter if you're in international waters or not, I think that's still counted as assault. Whip dogs don't bark. <laughs> I don't need to be that news story. I don't need to be that <laughs> news story of headline of small American dyed haired woman who looks like t Tokidori from My Hero Academia <laughs> chokes out young couple on air flight back to Los Angeles. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I'd be if it was me, I'd be more embarrassed of being the couple that got choked out by you than I would be anything else. That's why they wouldn't talk, you see. Small five foot six woman chokes out couple. Couple, please don't put this in the newspaper. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but, but yeah, so you know. But besides that, returning home was easy and everything. I uh, I discovered the very stark differences between my tastes, which I share with Max's tastes and Golden Fox's tastes, because I tried to make Golden Fox watch Oh Hello on Broadway, which me and Max watched, and the Shrek musical, and he hated both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I never want to hear someone say these two things. One, I don't like John Mulaney cosplaying as an old man. That is something Golden Fox said. You cosplaying as an old man. I've never heard anything so millennial in my life. And then two, you know, I mean... I like the costume designs and everything of the Shrek the Musical, but the songs were too formulaic. Uh, Brett, it's a it's a musical telling a, a story and it's a comedy. Yeah, but I mean, Hamilton wasn't like that. Hamilton and Shrek the Musical are two very different things. They're, one's a comedy, one's a political drama, but they're both musicals. That doesn't mean that they're the same thing. No. <laughs> Cue an hour-long lecture that he fell asleep through. J Justice League and Endgame are both uh, comic book action movies. So... We don't, we, don't, we don't talk about Justice League. <laughs> oh, not even Leo likes it. Okay. Oh, man. Look, Leo, there was something that we all went to go see Justice League in theaters, and when the credits rolled and everything was over and people were leaving the theater, the first thing, first noise to come out of the theater was me saying, well, that sucked. Oh, God, it did. It oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it did. Trust me. I think, I've never met, was in a movie where I felt more not wanting to be in a movie theater. I think I, think I was more sinking into my chair as it went on. And I had to bite my tongue during that fucking scene where Superman looks at the Flash while Flash is in... Anyway, that was my week, so... <laughs> I, I, I have one question, though, just because I'll forget if I don't ask now. What do you guys think is the best comic book movie? Oh, comic book movie? Well, here's a... Okay, then that I mean, actually the, opens it up a lot because there's yeah. a lot of graphic novel yeah. movies that are I really mean, yep, good. It v does. V video game mu movies have just been answered uh, with... Cat, uh, P P Detective Pikachu, but uh, yeah. but no. Um, anime adaptations too, with Alita being okay as a movie, but still the best anime live action adaptation. But general comic book. I have a. I, I mean, I really, really like Scott Pilgrim. I think that's the one that best mm. trans. I think I don't think it's the best movie movie, but as an ad, this is the thing for adaptations. It is the best adaptation of taking what made the comic so interesting of like its visual elements, how it incorporates video game stuff and bringing it to the screen in a visual medium. That was an actual good switch of mediums while staying true. It's not the best movie out there, don't get me wrong, but a lot of its problems can also be attributed to the problems that are with the book. So, it, but that's just general story stuff. But of superhero comics? Sure. Probably Shazam. How about oh, you, Max? What's pretty your good. Uh, Shazam was pretty good, but I would still not go for the best. Probably the best in the DCEU. Uh, competing with Wonder Woman. Very different tones. Hard to say. But in general, I mean, it's very easy to go for something. Wait, I forgot. Spider-Verse. Okay, Spider-Verse <laughs> wins. Spider-Verse wins. Uh, whoop, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's very easy to go for basically anything in the MCU, or not anything, but the highlights of the MCU. But are they really the best? Uh, as much as I love them, 
I, I, I know that I discovered that some uh, um, uh, Kingsman, for example, is also based on a comic book. I only found this on afterwards. And the first Kingsman, I really loved. The second one, eh. But the first one. <laughs> Uh, but still, the best oof. probably depends on the mood a little bit. Like Kingsman is is, is a favorite I return to in the MCU. I really really like uh, um, the Spider Man ones and uh, generally the team up ones. Oh, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Um, the more exotic ones is probably when somebody will mention them to me afterwards. I will be like, oh, how could I not remember? But I usually what? suck thinking on the spot like this. All right. I'll, since now that Keyframe is back, I'll go ahead and tell you what my choice is. And okay. I, I'd, lo I'd love to be able to include Spider-Verse in general, but unfortunately I haven't seen it. And the only reason why I haven't seen it is because there's something <laughs> – I know. There's something about the animation style that physically hurts my eyes. I think uh -huh. it's the texture they put on everything. So I would love to see it. I'm a big Spider-Man fan. But my answer is going to be the original 1990 Ninja Turtle film. Ooh, that's, that's a, that's a bold know? one. You know, no, you know, for what the source material is, you're, he's kind of right. It, it it was able to give a nice blend of the cartoon at the time, but also staying true to how intense the comics were. They did it within the span of like six months. They had revolutionary equipment provided by Jim Henson. It has a lot of technical problems, mm -hmm. including where you can see the suit actors in the mouths of the turtles. But as far as script, pacing, framing... It's, it's a film I can go back to any time, and I will always enjoy myself watching it. Yeah. I, 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 well, this, I, I mostly yes. recall the badness of the second one, where it's like... Ah. Isn't see, the second one is Secret of the Ooze, right? Yeah, Se it's, second it's, one has the super goofy monsters they fight against. Oh, it doesn't, has, that, doesn't that it have has, vanilla ice it in it? It has vanilla yeah. ice in it, yeah. and, and it has this absolute bullshit spoilers, I guess. Shredder survived... Double spoiler, Shredder survives being literally in a trash compactor at the end of the second movie. In the second movie, he drinks the ooze, is super powered, and a few planks from a, a falling apart t pier fall on him and kill him. Like, But I, have, eh? I, 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 feel, I feel Shredder's frustrated, specifically dealing with the certain community we've mentioned a couple times here, when it's like, you will call me your master, mama, babies, they're babies. So I feel like at the time interacting with some people. Oh, but, yeah. but welcome to the ADHD e cast. So exactly. to go back to our structure, exactly. it is time for media. And this, this right. was not a distraction. This was just a free dip into question area. But yeah, media, who wants to go first? Mine is horrible. horrible I think all of ours are horrible. <laughs> Yes, every single one. Wait, is your horrible by the quality or horrible because you had to pick this because you were so desperate to find something? The letter. Okay, how about you go first? <laughs> okay. I feel like me and Leo have more to say on ours than very, you probably very, have on yours. Very likely, very likely, because I, I, I really try to squeeze my brain and, and was like, okay, what did I watch? I, I started watching the second season of The Dragon Prince, but I haven't finished it yet, so it's kind of halfway through, not really good. I watched the last, uh, the new season of South Park this weekend, but it's just South Park. It's more of what people know. Nothing much to say about it. It's not a big twist in it. South Park. It's just South Park. Yeah, basically. It's, it's doing what it's been doing for ages now it still does a little bit of a spanning like a sp spanning arc for the entire season which i personally like but nothing nothing really to write home about um uh, uh, we started watching like like we we too started watching some things like the dc superhero girls but we only started there's not much that's the first impression i can give um uh, the 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 uh, the boys the boys, only one or two episodes, no, three, th just a few three episodes. Three episodes in. Yeah, also not enough to talk about. So the only media that I newly encountered this week, which I can talk about, is Beholder, which I played in my Let's Play stream on Tuesday. How is it? <laughs> it uh, actually is good. I mean, I get, uh, went into it a little bit. Uh, Yuri had already played it. And I considered it as a single-player game for gaming and ties for a while, and Yuri was like, uh, content-wise, barely, maybe barely enough for one two-hour stream. And I was like, 
Oh well, I guess I give myself. Uh, I, I I I just wanted to play it. I uh, picked it as a single player one because yeah, gaming and ties will now with Yuri's departure be a lot more single player focused, but not exclusively. Not exclusively like this Tuesday where it will not be single player and probably a very soon Tuesday after it. Also, we will continue battle blocks. So. Yay! Yeah, uh, yay! Uh, I, I played a lit I've I've seen gameplay of Beholder. I I haven't played it yet, but I've mm -hmm. seen some gameplay of it. It yeah. is fun. It it is fun. It uh, also has like um, for people who are familiar with Papers Please, it has a similar setup but very very different game mechanic. You you are also a, 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 a cock in a, a giant dystopian government. Uh, di, 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 right, what do you know? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, uh, no, I guess, I guess. Given, given yeah. how these people are, same people have made these games, it's a really write-what-you-know scenario. <laughs> I guess. Uh, where, where is it from, this game? Is it from somewhere Eastern Europe? Or... No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, these people know how to write good oh. games that are about dystopian being a cog in the machine thing. Wait, is it the, Simil sa is it the same writers? I think, I mean, it's, and... it's the, it, I think it's similar people have worked on both Could of be. them. Could be could be but yeah it has a similar tone but then shifted differently because now it's not just this very monotone where you just sit in your booth and stamp the papers and whatnot and check for stuff no this time is more uh, an active gameplay you have your actual avatar running around spying on people trying to be aware of what's going on in this hold, where, household where you, or this house with different parties living there you also have a family to look out for and uh, yeah, actually we didn't get Two, I, I have the feeling, unless there's some really big immediate twist coming, that uh, we play two hours. And, uh, I mean, we stretch the gameplay by being a little bit uh, ga uh, role-play about it. Uh, we read the dialogue with different voices and whatnot. But um, I have the feeling that there's at least one more stream in it. I especially want to continue playing it because, uh, uh, yeah... I, I, I really got to roll it and like I already was like ah I want to continue playing it but now it's a streaming game and now I have to wait until I have another Tuesday where I can continue Beholder, so um, it's a fun game uh, I would say since it's um, an indie title you can pick it up easily enough when it's on sale on Steam. Um, I mean you can always watch my gameplay of it to get an idea what it's about. Uh, uh, it's currently only ten bucks on uh, Steam right now. See, great, great and guys. The, and the whole like uh, bundle pack, which has Beholder, I think it has a DLC and Beholder Two, is only twenty three mm. bucks. Ah, well, that's uh, not bad. I mean, I will probably now that I uh, learn to enjoy Beholder, I might pick up Part Two. Um, but yeah, it, it gives you a sort of nice confrontation because, yeah, the government basically expects you to be their asshole representative. And while the first guy you basically have to spy on and convict and get arrested is an actual douchebag, they go out of their way to make him as unlikable as possible. <laughs> After that, basically, they are like, hey, now spy on this person. Now get rid of him. Like, get, but he hasn't done anything. He's a nice neighbor. And then it starts. Then it. Then you really have to make a decision. Am I now playing the asshole and I'm trying to play the the good guy and risk uh, getting found out by the government? I decided to go for the complete tool in the system, roughless government agent. How uh, I'm disappointed. Pet. Wow. No. Uh, see, when I play video games. <laughs> I, uh, a wise person named Jesse Cox has said the Ooh. same. In real life, I am, I would argue, I am a decent person. I don't do anything. I linked this video illegal. down below that you're referencing. Yes, it's beautiful. That I don't do anything illegal. I'm like, thank you, please. Yeah, you're great. Yeah. But in video games, I am Joffrey. I am. I am the. I will destroy your life and kill your kill your parents while the children are watching. I am. I am a terrible person in video games, or I'm just a terrible video game player. As I as I make it my active goal to be the worst person that has ever played Mark of the Ninja. But you know, so well, I, to see. I was yeah. I was actually thinking you mentioned this co-optional uh, animated one where he's basically like yeah if the uh, if the uh, apocalypse comes I would be one of those street gang leaders <laughs> because that's also beautiful. I think wow. that would be I, that would be me. I suddenly have like a 
uh, like a like a half done mohawk a la tank girl and i'm like you want to come with me or you die <laughs> it's your it's your choice <laughs> But yeah, so um, but yeah. oh yeah, uh, yeah fun, so fun, would you recommend Beholder? Uh, yes, I would. I mean, it's an indie game. You don't wait, uh, uh, spend too much money on it. If it intrigues you in any way, watch some gameplay maybe first. Don't go too deep into. Just see if the gameplay mechanic is something down your li uh, for your likings, and also see if um, this uh, and, and consider if you like this kind of moral choice game. And if so, yeah, pick it up. It's cheap enough and uh, enjoy it, I guess. Mm. Hmm. Who wants to go next and rent about something? How about Leo? you, Leo? Oh, okay. Thank you, Leo. Okay. You, are a gent you are a gentleman. So let me pick the right one. Yay. Okay, wait. Before you play this. Oh. No, hold, pause it. I paused it. First of all, first of all guys. Um, this one's going to hurt. As you can see, this is provided by the Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> this is your first warning. Of <laughs> Let me give you backstory, okay? Welcome to Chrissy rants about a bad movie. Man, this has been a while. Um, so randomly dropped in our laps like months ago was a trailer for this thing for a Banana Splits movie. For people who don't know what the Banana Splits are, because I've had people ask me, "What the hell is this, Christine?" It's okay. Uh, I remember. I, Leo, you and I are old souls. True. Not everyone else is. I swear that Max is only a little bit, a little bit older than you, and I feel like he has the soul of an infant that never grew up. I am hip with the wow. kids. <laughs> wait, wait, where are my hip glasses? No, uh, I dropped stuff. <laughs> but my hip glasses are still somewhere from my cosplaying as a demo man. So. I mean, I already had to deal with his glasses once. I'm hip with his kids. I, I have I have spicy Skittles on my desk. I bought those. And I'm eating them. Are, aren't they good? I didn't know those existed. I love them. They're like sweet and spicy and they're great. I, I found them at a Spencer's once and I can't go back. I can go back to the Spencer's. I can't go back to just eating normal Skittles. Oh, but, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> That would be a story. How do but you yes, I, I still had the Banana Splits theme song stuck in my head. From oh, Washington. yeah. Tra -la -la -la. No, but no. Okay. So the Banana Splits were like this weird live action skit show from 1969 made with, from Hanna-Barbera with these people in like costumes. And then there would be like animated shorts around it. And I mean, it was somewhat popular. It had like one actual movie but like no one has ever heard of it since you know it, it's one of those where it was the sands of time because unless you're the flintstones or scooby-doo no one remembers something from Anna barbara yeah. <laughs> but like um but then the sci-fi channel dropped this of like being like hey guys we're gonna make a Anna barbara movie okay it's gonna be the, about the banana splits okay it's an r-rated horror movie what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, okay, I'm just going to, when the trailer's playing and I'm talking about it, I sincerely think they used one of the scrapped Five Nights at Freddy's movie scripts. They did. And they did. They did. Because. Should I play movie, the, okay. You can play the trailer okay. now in the background. Okay. I just had to give this backstory. Okay, fair. Because me, aficionados, Chris, and our friend Lizzie watched this. Rated R. I rated. Okay, I'm already in <laughs> Oh, but this no, is a so, commercial. Okay. For, no, see, so looking at them, they look like they're just people in suits, right? Yes. No, uh, apparently they're animatronics. Uh -huh. And this does not take place in the 70s. This is in the 21st century where apparently in this universe, the Banana Splits has been a popular running show since 1969. Hmm. And the Wait, movie is... We have animatronics riding cars. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Apparently, this movie is about, uh, it revolves around this kid named Harley, who's, it's, it's his birthday, so they go to see a live taping of the Banana Splits, but the ad executives, or the executives of the studio, are canceling the Banana Split show, even though it has super high ratings, because the executive is like, and this is an actual quote from the movie, well, yeah, but I want to make something cool and edgy now, so you're canceled. Well, that's why they are now <laughs> becoming cool and edgy. Yeah, but now, but like, uh, so the 
programming that the animatronics have is that the show must go on because it's the only thing they have. So they start killing all the adults and kidnapping the children so they can keep performing the show. This movie, which which has music by Fallout Boy. What? What? <laughs> yes, Patrick Stump, the lead singer of Fallout Boy, not only does all the music for the for the movie, sings the theme song at the end of the movie, and in the credits, he doesn't use his stage name, which is Patrick Stump. He uses his actual legal name of Patrick Stump, like P H. We thought it was a typo. It's his actual name. I see why he changes it for stage. But <laughs> this movie is awful, but it's amazing. <laughs> it is, first of all, this whole movie was ma- was filmed in South Africa, and you can really tell. <laughs> what? In that the, the studio is like in the middle of a fucking desert. Why would and- you... My head's hurting now. You no, know, they thought, they filmed it in South Africa because it was probably a tax haven. Let's be real here. Uh, um, most of the characters are assholes. <laughs> like, the dad of the kid, in the first 20 minutes of the movie, says, you're too old to call me daddy, even though the kid's like six. Calls his kid stupid and a freak. Um, and And is actively showing to cheat on his wife with his secretary. And when his kid almost gets run over by the banana buggy by accident, he and his wife tells him, your son almost got run over by a banana buggy. His first response is, wow, that would be an embarrassing way to die. (laughs) You know that one death in a movie that you're happy to happen? Uh, Let's just say there was a moment where we screamed in joy. First of all, you know, I'm just saying it wouldn't be too hard to make these things horrifying because they look horrifying. <laughs> uh, at least the monkey does. But no, the thing is, we were like riffing the movie while we were watching it. And the one thing I brought up that everyone was like, yeah, that's very true. These cannot be robots because the way that they kill them, they revel in the killing and do it slowly. That's what a human does. When there's, like, uh, with robots, they would try to kill as efficiently as possible. And then Chris was like, oh, that's a really good point. (laughs) But the thing is, I could, I would love to say that this, I would love to say that this movie is just straight up bad. The worst part is there's actually good stuff in it. Oh, it gets better. (laughs) Like, some of the kids, like, some of the kid actors are actually really good. The gore in the movie is actually good looking like it it it's like decent looking practical gore effects like they only use like digital blood effects i think like twice which is for a sci-fi movie you know the channel that brought us jumping into a shark's mouth with a chainsaw oh really sci-fi is behind sharknado sharknado yes that's why i was like this is your first warning and they open the ending is open for a sequel Ooh. But no, I just have to say, this movie was the most entertaining hour and 45 minutes of my life this week. In the sense of, wow, how can there be these good things inside these bad things? And I want to keep watching. I've seen some bad movies in my day where I'm just like, okay, I'm good. I don't want to finish this. I was invested in how bad this was. And a lot of people would be like, this is a FNAF movie. Yeah, it's a FNAF movie, except it makes less sense because you can't say that these things are possessed by dead children. They're just malfunctioning robots. Hmm. And But like, then one of the robots turns good and it's like, okay, they have to be possessed by something. You can't say that they're not. Like there's so many unexplained things. But I think my favorite part of this whole movie was fucking, I guess, spoiler warning. Uh, uh, of, wait, wait, I can't wait. Woo. Yeah, okay, this is the the best thing in this movie was what was like the first on-screen death that you see, which is like the live action person that's with the show who's an alcoholic and says to the robots how much he hates them. You know, because they're robots, they don't have feelings. So then the robot comes into his dressing room, takes one of the lollipop props, which is like one of those giant lollipops like you can get at Disneyland or whatever, holds him by his neck like this, then 
slowly shoves it into his mouth, though it's meant it's shot to look fast. Shoves it down, breaks his jaw, and you can see the lollipop bulging his neck out. And he's, like, bleeding out of it. It is actually kind of creative. But it was shot so shittily that I'm like, should I like this or should I hate this? Hmm. Good lord. Uh, but yeah, I actually recommend people watch this movie. I'm if not they're recommend... not too squeamish, I guess. Uh, yeah, unless you're squeamish, because some of that gore, they split a guy in half at some point. Like, they, they don't, they use the R rating to its advantage when it comes to the gore. But, like, if you want some stupidly fun entertainment, and I'm fully acknowledging, this is not a good movie. But if you want some fun, go find it. I don't know if I would recommend spending the $20 that it costs to get it off Amazon or YouTube. They already um, saved enough through the safe, uh, tech save and they filmed it in. Yeah, you can probably just find it on Put Locker like we did. I, I mean, find it in a totally legal method. Uh, <laughs> at Blockbuster, like, I'm pretty sure Blockbuster yeah, had the, a, a... Blockbuster a, home video, go to the back. It's probably right next to Strange Magic and something else. But like... I hate this movie, but I also want to watch it again. But watch it with friends. This is a movie you have to watch with people. Okay, Because okay. then you know that you're going to have fun. Hey, Max, you know what we should watch on Monday during our binge-watching things? Excellent idea. Then, keep him. I have... Why we are still on this topic, and this uh, of, uh, of the recommendation obviously like, goes on. Like it's our... It's R-rated anyway, so I should not uh, have to, to distinguish here between adults and non-adults, but... What are the rules for a drinking game for this video for this movie you would like to recommend? Ooh, that's a great idea. You're welcome. Is that what uh, you have a German friend for? Drinking game suggestions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the three. I need to write down these rules because I am watching it with you, and we will do this. Uh, ah. <laughs> yes. You're fine. <laughs> Anyways, no, uh, yes. The, the, the three rules I can come up with on the top of my head. When the dad is an asshole, well, that may kill you. <laughs> then again, he's not seen for a lot of the movie at some point. Not because he's dead, but yeah, the, take a drink. Um, anytime the robots move like humans, or like they do something that is more human-like than robot-like. and um, Basically, every scene in the trailer I saw, they didn't feel like robots. <laughs> And then uh, whenever, <laughs> this one you just have to drink until it's over. Whenever you hear the Banana Splits theme song in a scene that's not supposed to, it, that's not supposed to probably, that's supposed to be scary, but it's not. So when you hear like, -la 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 -la, just, just keep drinking until it's over. You, you will murder people with this suggestion. Anyways, uh, 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 anyway, Leo, Leo, it's your turn. Have fun. Oh, no. Okay. So you let you are... let her go first, so... Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I prefer to let people go before me. All right, so the piece oh. of media... Yeah. <laughs> the piece of media that I'm covering is going to be the crossover between He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and DC's Injustice. A little bit of background before this begins. Uh, He-Man had a run in New 52 that was garbage. He previous to this had a crossover with Thundercats that was also garbage and this takes right place right after that the idea is to pit He-Man against DC's universe in the Injustice universe where Superman has become a power mad dictator who has done terrible things including killing Billy Batson who is Shazam and the purpose of this crossover was to bring He-Man more to the comic zeitgeist as a whole again but there's a problem, and it's an ongoing problem that we've had with anything involving He-Man in the recent era, is He-Man, though in some ways he tends to be violent, specifically with the mini comics, at his core, He-Man's a property for children. Meaning the types of violence he should be in, or the types of content that sh he should be covered with, isn't to the extreme that some other comics should have. And in this comic alone, you have He-Man... He's supposed to be going on this journey to find out if it's He-Man that's him or if it's Prince Adam that's him. And number one, the writing side of that was handled very, very poorly by Tim Seeley. And the art 
is also, believe it or not, very bad. We're looking at it right now, and while some of it may look good or impressive, when you actually sit there and look at it, there are major issues with anatomy. Every single character has a white outline around them because the colorist has a hard time yeah. distinguishing has a hard time distinguishing uh, the characters from their background and from the foreground. And there are other images I didn't bring with me because I, I don't want to get too deep into it that there, there are severe issues with the art. But the biggest issue is they've turned He-Man into something that I would never show a child. He-Man in this comic is unfortunately extremely arrogant. He's very egotistical. And there's even a shot in this comic of Supergirl tearing the He-Man villain too bad in half. Hmm. Very gory, very bloody. And when I asked the individual who wrote this comic, what were you doing in this? What were you trying to say? And I said, because this, this goes too far for He-Man. And his response was, I was making a commentary on violence in children's properties. Mm. And I asked him a direct question. I asked him, for or against? <laughs> <laughs> and his response was, I leave that up to my readers. So he and, didn't make a statement after all. No, and that and you know, I'm I, I've seen a lot of people, specifically when that within that comics gate movement, they give a lot of grief to artists and writers, and that's not how I tend to operate. So once I got my question unanswered, I'm like, All right, fine, then you don't stand behind it. And he said, No, I do stand behind it. I'm like, then why don't you answer the question? But there's this, there's this ongoing mentality, unfortunately, with these children's properties. And oddly enough, it ties back into Keyframes media here, that to make something better or more enjoyable, you have to increase the quote-unquote maturity of it by adding vulgarity or violence. And people who believe that, I'm afraid they're stuck in, I guess, a high school mindset. Like, where children who think Family Guy is a mature show, when it really doesn't tend to be, because the themes of it aren't mature. While it may have a rating that would tell you so, maturity comes from things like themes, ideas, concepts. Berserk isn't a mature manga because it has violence and sex. It's mature because it's very esoteric and because it asks a lot of deep questions of his characters. Guts isn't a character that is just, he's a really good guy. No, he's, he's a terribly flawed, damaged human being. And when it comes to media, sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm listening. No, it's just no, like it looks me, like they put, a, they put like a stone texture on her leg. Yeah, why does like, have to? Why does all this artwork look like they took the artwork and put the oh posterized filter on Photoshop? Like, uh, sorry, I, continue. I, mm. It says okay. Ah! You're, you're taking me through. I already went through all this. I already went through all this. It looks like so, boils. Okay. So what they did in the series was, number one, they tried to make He-Man more mature in the wrong way, which is, of course, sex and violence. And frankly, I'm going to put it very bluntly. If you want He-Man to be filled with sex and violence, just shut up and go watch Conan. Because that's what you want. Leave He-Man alone. He-Man, if you take him and divorce him from being a children's property, it ruins the magic and the allure of the character. Now, in terms of this story itself, there were also other issues. What they did with He-Man was... Not only did he have the power of grace, but they also gave him the power of the wizard Shazam. For Wait, some so aspect. He turns like a... Oh, the wizard, not the hero. No, he, the wizard gives him that power. He gives him the power Billy once had. I mean, Billy is dead, so sure, yeah. take it. This is after Skeletor tried to take it, by the way. Obviously. There, this, this is a strange story. It is poorly written. It is poorly handled. And Tim Seeley thinks his He-Man Shazam combination is the best idea he ever had. And wow. if that's the case, you start to understand why DC is having really bad numbers in their comics. And when you get the chance, read this. And I don't mean read this as in enjoy it. Take a good hard look at it, because this is what people try to do when they think they are improving on a previous concept. I did not need, as a kid, for He-Man to snap necks and cut people in half to enjoy him as a character and to know who he is. But for some reason, people in my generation are the mentality that as I grow older, therefore the things I like must grow older. If I see a version of He-Man or Thundercats that delve deep into the darkness, deep into the violence or the sex like they did with Thundercats The Return, that doesn't make me enjoy the property more. It makes me enjoy it less because these people clearly don't understand the characters they're writing. He-Man at his core, although he might sometimes be a barbarian like in the mini comics or he might just be a really happy person trying to do the right thing, like the Filmation series. At the core, He-Man's still a character who's ultimately trying to fight evil and do good, and you cannot have a type of character like that and throw him in the darkness and let him be corrupted by it. If That's they were how right, they fuck up Superman all the time. 
Exactly. And that's actually my point here. If the writing here was to show the dichotomy of light and dark using He-Man versus Superman in that aspect, they might have done well, but they didn't. And then they try to shoehorn the, well, I accept myself for He-Man and Prince Adam at the end of it when not actually touching at it very well at all in this comic. And they're going to be bringing back He-Man again for a brand new comic run by the same writer. And I have a lot of people in my community, old man who likes cartoon community, who think it's going to be great, and I'm telling you right now it's going to bomb. Just like I don't think the Kevin Smith, He-Man, Netflix series that's coming out is going to do good because they're going to make the same mistakes. If I wanted to watch Conan, I'd just do what I already do. Read you Conan. just watch Conan. If I want to watch Game of Thrones, I'd watch Game of Thrones. I wouldn't skin He-Man over it. It's, it's insulting, and it devalues it as a whole to me, especially in storytelling ability, because there's a lot to the world of He-Man that can really be expounded upon and really be driven into, but instead they just focus on these really inane things, and I don't understand why they think it's going to work. Yeah, there's going to be some guys like, oh, man, didn't you see He-Man's cutting people in half now? It's like, yeah, but what about his morals? What about his values? What about this character that he used to stand for? What about, what are they doing about that? Well, nothing. They're doing absolutely nothing about that. They're not focusing on He-Man as a character. They they like the concept, and they try to skin it over other things. And Mind that's if why... I add a point? Go ahead. No, I was just going to, because I'm just adding on to yours because I am, I'm not an old man loving old cartoon community, but I am something of that. But like, uh, one thing that I hate is the whole thing, like you said, maturity is not indicative of what they do, it's how you do it. Because just adding sex and, and curse words does not make a mature person. In fact, the most immature pe- most immature adults in the world are people who are only obsessed with doing that and being like, ha, fuck, shit, fuck. You know, Correct. it's... I'm feeling cold out. Well, you have a little bit more brain cells than that. Well, there, there's, uh, also, there's also something else I'd like to point out here. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I'm an avid comic reader and I'm also an avid fan of 80s cartoons, when they were talking about who they're bringing in, because you saw they had Dark Side involved in this, mm. and they're like, "Oh man, he man's gonna take out Dark Side." I had to sit there, and this this lost me a lot of people who liked me. Like, do you do realize that when we're doing crossovers, you want to have things about equal? And as much as I love He Man, there's no chance that he's gonna be able to take on someone like Dark Side. Dark Side's course, one of the most powerful people in the entire U- DC universe. Correct, but their their back is always, well, He-Man is the most powerful man in the universe. Like, yes, that's a tagline. Congratulations. That means nothing compared to another universe. And there's actually even, there's one bit of writing here that actually is accurate. Of when Superman was looking through the multiverse to determine who could be a threat to him, he said to, to He-Man, I know who you are. I know what you do. You are lower in rank than Captain Carrot on my list of people that could hurt me. And he's not wrong, and that pissed a lot of people off. That part's accurate, but unfortunately, a lot of these He-Man fans, they don't delve outside of He-Man, which I find very odd. So it was a complete mismatch. It's almost as bad as the Power Rangers Justice League crossover from years ago. If you have a character like Superman who can wipe out any Power Ranger villain, why would you cross him over with with Power Ranger over with the entirety of the Justice League? It's completely unbalanced, and you had a similar situation here. There's yeah. there's no reason why this comic should have existed, especially with the Injustice universe, which is so dark and, frankly, depressing. I don't read Injustice. I don't play it, and there's reasons for that. And those are the reasons. I think it's absolute garbage. I don't want to touch it. Don't want to mess with it. But what do they do? They take a character that I'm very fond of, that I like quite a bit, and they shoehorn him into it. And it's absolutely vile from the art to the writing to how things pan out and what they're going to do with him in the future. But I think that's probably enough of this old man raging about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean yeah. uh, if uh, one thing came out of it, uh, you uh, actually have been uh, 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 asked for a fight IRL by Blair Force, who is oh, like, yeah. uh, I disagree with everything Leo Convoy says, no matter how, uh, how rational pro- uh, provide <laughs> no reason for my disagreement. Fight me IRL. I mean, did you ever... Uh, uh, deny such an invitation? <laughs> Blair's a friend of mine, like a, a real life friend of mine. I assume. Oh, okay, cool. Any anytime you're big enough, boy, let's do it at Ridfest. <laughs> Blair, how's that sound? I just, uh, but yeah, I mean, ju- just to say two things. One, yeah, because how power the most powerful person in your said universe is relative to what's in your universe. Uh, people need to remember the He-Man universe. While it has stuff like magic and everything. It's not nearly on the power level as, well, 
all the shit that's in a, the mainline DC universe. Yeah, and, and I, I've actually gotten into these debates, and it's gotten me kicked out of a few groups because I make people this mad. It's like, let, I, I'll break down actual feats these characters can do. Like, He-Man can run as fast as a whirlwind, according to the various sources. So that means he can run up to 100 miles per hour. Because there's a that's where a whirlwind differentiates the from a tornado. Flash can time travel with his yes. speed. But we're specifically in this case it's always He Man versus Superman. And it's yeah. like, all right, Superman He Man's highest feat of strength, his maximum feat of strength is when he pushed Eternia's moon. That's impressive. Superman's hit something hard enough to break time and space. Superman can make the Earth's rotation go in reverse yeah. so, to make day. Yeah, like, so while I love He Man. That's a very foolish versus simply due to the fact that Superman's power is absurd. And while Superman does have a vulnerability to magic, there's one key thing people keep forgetting. You have to hit him first. Good luck doing that. Because yeah. he's fought characters that use magic swords multiple times. From Wonder Woman to literally at one point lion -O, And neither time has he been whooped by So, you know, good luck. But these people, they don't... They don't Unfortunately, a lot of these He-Man fans are very much so. That is what they like. Saber Nothing Spark asks you, Leo, since you're the aficionado, who would win in a fight, He-Man or the IRS? Well, I'd have to say uh, I'd have to say He-Man because He-Man doesn't have any sort of identification the IRS could track him by. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> a great point. But yeah, the only other thing I was going to add to to your thing to be like, if you want a good thing that's comic-wise that takes a fairly children's pop property and makes it mature read the read those um read this the flintstone comics that dc has been bring, uh. bringing out look i'm just saying at least then the mature aspect of them as ridiculous as it is it 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 does what the flintstones was originally doing and making kind of like you know comedic commentary of what's going on at a time but back in the 60s, it was to be like sitcoms and honeymooners making fun of that. This is actually like, you know, real life stuff. So I'm just saying that is actually an example of someone attempting to be mature without just inserting sex and violence. Yeah. And the question is, will they teach us how to smoke certain brands of cigarette, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, well, I mean, Winston's good as a <laughs> cigarette should. Uh, <laughs> real <laughs> real quick here. Uh, Saber Spark, anytime you want to talk about Thundercats, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, man. That's what I do. And but, with that. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are going to move on to the Q and A. Yeah, Yee. and we, we, we in theory have already started since we already answered a question asked by Leo himself. We <laughs> we've answered a lot of questions without getting to the Q and A. Did we have any on Twitter, Maximilian? Yes, we have one on Twitter by York. Uh, uh, York asked for all three. I mean, we usually just take all the question on anyways. <laughs> what's the worst? Uh, what's the worst? Not the worst. The worst video game you have ever played. That's a, that's a big big question, actually. Oh, I, I have my answer, but I'll let you guys go first. We could probably mix I this in with we could, we could probably mix this in with Denim's question of what's the best terrible game and the worst good game you've ever played? So uh yeah, but the word just straight up worst game ever played. The problem is uh, really uh, really bad games. I would probably play for a few minutes and then drop. So, um, hey, that's actually a great idea. Let me look in my Steam history, <laughs> which games have <laughs> which games have a play time, but the lowest play time. I mean, there have probably been worth uh, other really bad games on console or something that I actually played back in my days or tried to play and dismissed quickly. I I, I think game. I think I. Uh... I think I have two. Oh boy. One was on Game Boy, one was on GameCube. Please, please <laughs> go ahead while I do my research. Uh, yeah, you, you do that. Um, no, 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 one is a no, PC no, no. game. Oh, PC game. oh, yeah. I know mine now. Okay, mm, okay, say, so say, angry. say it, say it, say it, so angry. say it, say my, it, your anger intrigues me. My, my, you, you probably know it. So. People might know that I am uh, that I have a soft spot, guilty pleasure wise, for uh, an actually despicable game by the name of Honey Pop. One of the very few games oh, that is actually Honey yes, one of the few games that's actually blacklisted on Twitch. I mean, yeah, keep in Honey mind this is also this is also the uh, same blacklist that has a. Uh, you you keep talking. I'm yeah. trying to get the I mean, blacklist up. Honey Pop is really it, it's wrong. It, it it's a fucking wrong game. The narrative is really... It's, it's 
bad, bad. I mean, you're basically are are meant to stalk uh, and a, seduce st- as stalk, many seduce, bribe, and manipulate women into sleeping exact, with you. Exactly, it's you. You're at the same time persu- uh, persuading a mother and a daughter. Uh, uh, so you're, you play the game as Kevin Spacey then? Basically, and, and it's also like all of the characters no, are horrible. No, everyone's legal and everyone's female. So yeah. uh, no, okay. Also, oh, good point. But but yeah, also all the uh, majority of the characters are also horrible, over the top stereotypes. Like uh, 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 it's it, it's a horrible, politically incorrect game, as as bad as it gets. God, I love it. And 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 you date people for anybody who doesn't know Honey Pop. You date women by playing Met 3. Basically playing Bejeweled. Yes, it's, it's a metaphor. Like, oh, if you connect those four in a line, that's a, that's a romantic match. And if you play those... And, some, and, 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 lo- and love and whatnot. And some characters react differently to it. And it's, once again... I, it's, it's bad, but it's amazing. It's, yes. However... And while Honey Pop 2 is currently in the process and comes out soon, for Honey Pop 2, they take like two or three years of time in production now, and I'm really excited for it and looking forward to it. I have friends who are voicing in this game. And, ooh. Ooh, oh, yeah. And, and yeah, f- fully fully voice voice acted as well, so it's... Uh, Which makes Honey Cam even more annoying. <sighs> Honey Cam Studios! So apparently, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what gets them because they had already started working on Honey Pop Two. They knew what they wanted to do, but for some godforsaken reason, they produced Honey Camp Studios, which is a clicker game, which already is the first red flag. Supposed to be kind of like a tycoon game. Yeah, I kinda. guess. The, and- it was like Roller Coaster Tycoon meets the Cookie Clicker. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I I, I link uh, Jesse Cox Let's Play. No, but it. Jesse liked it, and he was terrible at it. Yes, but the thing was just to give context. I saw Jesse Cox because I'm a fan. Uh, uh, I watched it when he uh, him when he played it, and he played it so. Ho- I, I I disliked the game by by watching it, but he played it so horribly bad that I needed to get it and prove you that to get I. The diamond dick. Exactly, I needed to get the diamond egg, uh, which is a tr- tr- trophy if you finish the game. But yeah, so I, I, I kind of proved to myself that, yeah, this fucking stupid game is not even good as a game because I could beat it with the highest trophy uh, in my second attempt. The first attempt was like 20 minutes in, I fucked up, I understood now the mechanic, and then I just played it and aced it. So the game is not good and challenging as a game. It's a clicker game. Okay, those statements were redundant. Hey, yo! voice acting are like three looping lines. Exactly. What, the Honey Pop has this vast major, a vast array of characters fully voiced and, and, and with passion in it. it. It's wrong, it's horrible, it's politically incorrect, but it's a passion project and you feel it. And Honey the other thing Cam, is, yeah, I'm, it, I'm just going to, yeah, yeah. Co- continue, continue, sorry. Honey Cam takes all those characters. First of all, it takes the, 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 the tutorial character from Honey Cam, for, takes Q. the tutorial, yeah, takes the tutorial character from Honey Pop, Q, and makes her just a very annoyed, frustrated human. He, she is basically the only one who gives you any voice lines. All the other girls, they also imported all the other poor girls I'll from the original best. game with basically one or two lines. Um, and uh, all of this is already not good. What really, it felt like a cash grab, like no of, none of the passion was in it. And what personally kills this game completely for me, so you start out with having them as cam girls, you then later can build brothels to hand them out to clients directly, and there is an achievement to collect all STDs at the same time. Classy. Which will kill your characters, basically. It, it's like, what? yes. Yeah, there is yes. passion behind the game. There's passion no. to make you feel like the most active yes. scumbag yes. in the universe. And the, 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 once again, the Honey Pop series, I like the crude humor. humor. I like the, 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 the political incorrectness, the wrongness of it. But this game is just like, wow, this is not edgy anymore. This is just like in bad taste. I mean, they actively encourage you to instead of buying condoms and stuff, which will protect your girls when they do the brothel stuff, which makes more money than the cam girl stuff 90% of the time, to instead buy like cigarettes and drugs to keep them awake to do the cam girl stuff or make them inclined to do the cam girl stuff so they have money to get these things. And it's so, 
so and the thing is honey pop honey pop yeah, it's a politically incorrect game, but the characters are likable. You do, except for Audrey, unless you're just into that type of girl, you actively like the characters. They're charming. The game, in its own weird way, is charming. This has no charm. It takes the characters you love from the previous game, and then new characters, which could have had the potential to be liked, and just you're just treating them like shit. You become like yeah. a disgusting pimp, yeah. and not in the fun way. Because you don't get, because and you don't even get any <laughs> lewd art out of it. No, it's 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 really like Honey Camp Studios is shit. It's 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 just really disappointing that they put it out. And yes, I guess this answered the question why uh, this is my personal worst game. There are probably games out there that are mechanically yeah. worse or less functioning or buggy, but this game. I, I really despise it, especially become uh, it comes from people who, who who had fun crossing crossing a line here or there. But in this case, they took a sprint, they jumped with a paraglider to get as far ac- uh, beyond the line that the you line should not cross. Possible. Yes. So, yeah, okay. I, I could I could never play that game because no. I tend to play games that align with my morals, which is why I play Doom. But no, I couldn't. <laughs> I really couldn't play that game. I guess yeah. to say, just to say, Honey Pop and Honey Cam, <laughs> one I think deserves to be on this prohibited games list more than the other, mm-hmm. is on the same list as uh, the list that has games titled The Maiden Rape Assault, Violent Semen Inferno, uh, ah! uh, <laughs> Ethnic Cleansing, oh. <laughs> just, um, uh, Battle Rape, and Rape Lay. All the Sakura Sakura games. Fun games for the family. And and suck my dick or die. This is why God's angry at us. But yeah, Leo, what's your worst (laughs) game? You have plenty of time to think. Oh, he had his right right away. Okay, okay. So, if Blair's still listening, which, by the way, and I might want to check your Twitter, you got another question from him. Oh, boy. My, the, the worst game I have ever played this goes back to when i told you about my mom getting media for us that she thought was really really innocent and whatnot my mother got us a video game for super nintendo called yogi bear adventures oh god no no <laughs> this game <laughs> i have played some bad games i have played dr jekyll and mr hyde i played battletoads which isn't bad it's just really hard i played basically if there's a bad game i've played it yogi bear is the worst game I have ever played in my life. It is poorly designed. It is way faster than it should be. And there is no way I've, I've never seen anybody beat this game. Never seen anybody. I'm sure somebody has. And that person's a God among men, but I, I lose it when I play this game. It's whoever programmed this. I'm sure. I'm sure God's angry at him for something. And it's this. (laughs) So it's, it is the worst game I've ever played and I took it over to my friend Blair's house because Blair his, and, his, his brother and him are like video game aficionados they are the gamers that I know and they tried playing it and they raged within 15 minutes they wanted to chuck that thing into their pool so it is the worst game I've ever played now there is one game I played that was a good game but I just didn't enjoy it and that was uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past because I, mm. I just can't get I just can't get into Zelda simply because again my preference is if I'm in a game and I hear big bad evil person is trying to take over XYZ thing, my first thought is go to the gym, get a sword, and go murder his face off. Not let me cut down people's lawns and go on quests for them while I build up XP. My, des- my, my design is very much so like Doom Guy. I see evil and I try to rip its head off. So Zelda has a lot of really good game mechanics, especially for Link to the Past, that I'm sure a lot of people enjoy, but I just can't get behind it despite beating the game because I just want to murder the evil wizard. I don't want to go, I don't want to go mess with chickens. That's just my value system. Fair, fair. But, but, but yeah, the Yogi, the Yogi one was your personal worst. Oh my God. Yes. I still have it, but I hate it. (laughs) One day, one day I'm just going to sit down in all my rage and just try my best to beat it. And I'm going to, I'm probably just going to lose my mind at that point. And, I mean, since I already kind of answered Denim's uh, ver- uh, version of the question with the best terrible game, which would be Honey Pop, not Honey Cam, which is just terrible, do you also have a best terrible game? <sighs> so it's it's terrible, but somehow it's it, it, it brings a, 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 a very disturbed smile to your face. God, okay. what would that be? 
Or should we let Keyframe go first? With I think you should let Keyframe go first. I'm going to think on that one a little harder. Okay. Ha! Okay, this game. <laughs> it took me a minute, because at first I was going to say a GameCube game, because I played a lot of bad GameCube games, because my mom and dad usually bought me licensed games. Which, not all licensed games are bad. I have plenty of good licensed games, but there were some that were just not good. And then there was also a Naruto Nintendo DS game that was not fun, um, which had a terrible turn-based fighting system that I never understood. But instead, I'm going to tell you about the first game that I owned that I was just actively like, this game sucks. Sadly, it comes from my favorite franchise, which is good old Scooby-Doo. And it's a night... It's a, keep in mind, I love point and clicks, right? Yeah. Um, and I like puzzle games. Like I'm a huge fan of Sierra games and LucasArts and all this stuff. There was a game, uh, a good old PC game from 1999 called Scooby-Doo and the Mystery of the Fun Park Phantom, where you basically are in an abandoned amusement park and trying to figure out who the ghosts are. And it, and it, yeah, I put a screenshot of the game. Oh yeah, let, let me share with class. Flop. Yeah, it, so it's in this kind of top-down view. You point around, try to find traps and Scooby snacks and, fit, and clues and figure out who the ghosts are. This is the most broken fucking game I've ever played. <laughs> First of all, it looks like ass, even for 1999. You're, s sir, that is not a dog. That is some kind of weird snake creature that grew legs. <laughs> what is up? Where does his head start and his neck begin? Anyways, besides that, like, I could never, like, you would click on something. Your character won't move until you click like five times. You couldn't use the arrow keys or WASD. You had to click. And there was such a lag between clicking and going. Even for a game from 1999, it was bad. You never found anything. You can never find the clues because they're supposed to be hidden, but there's no indicator on what's actually a, a, an inanimate sprite and what's actually interactable. And then the ghost will randomly pop up and attack you, and then you lose all your clues. That is miserable. <laughs> and you could collect all these clues, like, and the, and it's like you can collect clues, like, so maybe one suspect has two clues, or you find four clues. That is not indicative of at all of who the actual culprit is. And when you get caught, the culprit them. changes. <laughs> this this is called keyframe. Keyframe. This is called replay value. Oh my god. No. <laughs> no, shut your goddamn fucking mouth. This game haunted me for five years. <laughs> five years to beat this game. Wait, you play, keep playing it and beat it eventually? Yes! <laughs> Go orient it first in Maximilian. Ah! I appreciate this, Rage. I understand it. <laughs> anyway. From the age of six. A 12! <laughs> no, 6 to 11! And when I was 11, I finally beat the game! Ah, uh, yeah, Leo, I guess you, you found your best terrible game. Yes, I found my best terrible game. This game was so oh. bizarre. It's called Sneak King. And the entire purpose of this game is to sneak up on people and offer them Burger King burgers. <laughs> It sounds it sounds terrible, but it also sounds like the best. Uh, I think my best worst game is probably a lot of people's, which is a fucking um, Mount Your Friends. <laughs> where you where, Mount Your Friends is this two is this two D game that you could play with other people, where you try to make the biggest stack of people, and so kind of like Jenga, okay. except you're these weird bean looking creatures with floppy dicks. Ah. Uh... <laughs> It's great. Anyway, thank you I, for I, the I question. Take, I take your word. Yeah, t thank you, York and Denim, for the question. I guess I can uh, squeeze in Blair's question, and then we should move on to the Twitter, uh, to the Discord, and we should move on quickly because we are already spending a lot of time here. Okay, Blair asked, without the hashtag, I'm so disappointed. Who would win in a fight? Leo Convoy, and uh, endowed with all of Superman's powers, having knowledge of how to use his powers from reading comics, but lacking the experience using the powers himself, or Batman? Well, I mean, the thing is, Leo's kind of dead right now because the power went out in his house. Wait, what? He's gonna be, he, he said, power just went out, then back on, be back on in a minute. Well, 
So we got a stall. So hi guys, welcome hi, guys. to the NPC cast. Uh, uh, we we can I guess we can already give our answer. Who would yeah, win? Yeah. So what was the two choices? Leo and Le okay. Uh... Leo endowed with so, all the powers of He-Man? Uh, Le Leo Convo endowed with all of Superman's powers, having knowledge of how to use his powers from reading comics, but lacking the experience using the powers himself, or okay. Batman. Wait, what universe are we in? Because if we're in the Zack Snyder universe, Batman will still win. <laughs> True, actually. I mean... I'd say, you know, except for... Uh, the uh, fucking Justice League when it became the Superman Jack Off Hour. Oh but, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Which, um, which even more raises the question: If Superman was so strong in Justice League, how could he be overpowered in BVS? Even when he's not, he is. That is the best answer I can give, Max. Because the the DCU is fucking garbage. <laughs> uh. I guess, you know, if I had to give a serious answer, probably because we know Leo and how he, he has also, I think the thing Leo has above actual Superman is that Leo kind of thinks strategically and has more using your brain skill than what Superman does. Because Superman's just the golden boy, but that golden boy comes usually with plot lines based around him confronting his naivety and how that interacts with his uh, moral quandaries. Leo has a moral compass a la Superman, but he also, you know, is more jaded and cynical knowing of the bad in the world. Mm. But he, so I think I think Leo would win. <laughs> he, he, but here's an interesting question um, where maybe Leo would not win. Would Leo have the hearts to kill Batman? Because Leo fucking loves Batman. I know that's I mean, true. he literally dressed up as Batman for okay, a Okay, so maybe, but, see, here's the thing, this would be the same thing of if, if, uh, fucking, the answer was if Leo had the abilities and riches and gadgets of Batman. Both of them have the, uh, moral compass to not kill, because that usually is part of Batman's and Superman's stipulations, you know, when they're written good. So, but, ah. <sighs> I don't think he would kill Batman, but defeating does not mean it's not the same as killing. Because mm. Batman's defeated the Joker a bunch of times by not killed him. That's true, that's true. So I would still say Leo would win the battle. Hmm, hmm. What about you? I mean, you made me explain myself. Yeah, but he, here's the thing. Because Leo has no practical using uh, of uh, uh, experience using his powers... And Superman is ridiculously strong. He has to take the risk. Uh, he has to consider the risk that the moment he confronts Batman with his super speed and super strength, he would basically instantly kill Batman. So if he wants really prevent killing Batman, he basically has to lose the fight. See, this is what I imagine Leo would do, though. He would. He, he there would be the battlefield with him and Superman, like mano a mano. Then he flies up flies away and comes back with a table full of He-Man comics and it's like okay here's the real battle we have to ex we have to debate which one has the be which one has the more inaccuracies so it will be a battle of brains yeah, i guess we can hear leo's uh, uh, conclusive answer to this uh, in a moment we can, i guess we can also see do we have more uh, what, if and what other funny questions do we have on let's see Discord? let's see I mean, we, there's an easy question that we can do the fill time, the button, the button changeling asked, which is, oh. um, which is a quick question. Okay. Uh, do you have any underrated media that you could think of off the top of your head? Ay, 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 ay. That's a problem with underrated media. Yeah, because the thing is, a lot of underrated media nowadays that comes from both of our generations are starting to get a, a yeah. turnout. Because I could, because I would automatically say, oh, Clone High, but Clone High is getting a resurgence, and uh, you know, and fucking anything from that two thousands era is getting a resurgence. So that basically negates anything from my timeline. And ninety stuff is already making a comeback. Mm. We've been in that ninety swing for the past five years. You know what? Uh, 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 I, I, as always, I cheat by going quickly going to Netflix and looking for inspiration. And I might have found an inspiration. Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, out of the loop, and it's actually not underrated anymore. And people already started loving it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mega Mind. You know what? Fair, fair. I yeah. think of the DreamWorks movies. That one is underrated. Yeah. Because I believe that Mega Mind came out back to back with uh, uh, Monsters and Aliens. No, with um, uh, Despicable oh. Me, and we oh, all yeah. know which franchise hit it off between those two, and which one got a great spin-off. <sighs> exactly. Fucking, so, fucking tic-tacs. Yeah, and, and, and Megamind, I really, really like it. Like, with the music choice, with I mean, it has the same basic idea also, like, super villain being forced in a situation where he acts good, and I personally really prefer Megamind a tidbit over uh, the first Despicable Me. I mean, the follow-ups just degraded rapidly. Yeah. But Hold yeah. on, I'm thinking I, I'm thinking of what... Oh God, here's the thing. The, the phrase underrated is very relative and subjective mm. between people because I've met people that have never seen Angry Beavers. Oh. And it's a, so I could say Angry Beavers is an underrated media, but... Angry Beavers was also one of like the prime Nicktoons at the time, so maybe it was rated during its time, but underrated as the as the generations have passed on. Hmm. Be- because you know, out of all the Nicktoons, Nicktoons eras, I would say that is one of them. Because not a lot of people acknowledge it when they're like, "Oh, some of the best uh, Nickelodeon shows," which I would be like, "No, it definitely is," because it's hilarious and it's one of the few shows where they actually kept the improv in the in the audio for the show. So, I agree. And, yeah, and then some people would actually say, you know, until recently, that Zim was an underrated media because that show got canceled as fast as it came on. But, yeah, but it did. But, but its cultural impact obviously yeah. stayed. So it's it's one of those things. Underrated is such a overrated term because it's like you either are underrated in your time and then get a surgeons, which we've seen with Iron Giant and Cat Stoke Dance and probably soon Titan AE and all this stuff, or you're rated during your time, but then no one remembers you. Hmm. All right, so, do, do you sorry. Have, my pa- no problem. I mean, he, here's a fun tradition about my, my second podcast I started, Leo, uh, which was after CBD, but uh, did it? Did I ever get a name? You were on it, Keyframe. What was the second podcast I started? I had only like four episodes, like you, Dr. Wolf, Truth Critic, and uh, I'm not even sure if there was a fourth one. I just remember you had like A and Y and cast on the side, and then yeah. you had like your human avatar, so... And, and, and the thing was that basically nearly every episode my guest the connection dropped and Died. I was sitting there completely alone like, hey, I, I, I finished the, another show I was, alone. I, I was actually, I think I was actually like the first episode, my webcam died and then in post you added like, well, she's gone. <laughs> Could be. But yeah, so no hard feelings. And hey, you came back, so all yeah. good, yeah, all so, good. So yeah, uh, what would you say is an underrated media in your opinion? Uh, overall media completely? Yeah. Sure. Uh, Vagabond, the manga. Mm. Yeah. But then we also had a question from your good old pal, which was, uh, who would win in a battle, Batman or you, imbued with all the powers of Superman, knowing how to use the powers, but never actually used the powers? We already gave our answers, but now we are interested in your conclusive answer. My conclusive answer is, uh, usually I'd go with Batman in this, but I'd say we'd all be screwed, simply because if I had Superman's powers, I knew what they were, but I didn't have the ability to control them. Um... Everything would get broken. Like, the entire planet would be destroyed. Because if a dude who, who breaks things just by touching them is incapable of controlling his power, everybody's screwed. Leo would sneeze and the I, entire city of Metropolis I mean, would this, this, dismantle. This is also kind of, kind of in between our answers. <laughs> yeah. So what was you guys' answers? I'm curious because I didn't get to hear it. Uh, my, 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 mine, was oh. you wouldn't actu- mine was that you wouldn't actually use the power of Superman. Because the thing that separates you from actual Superman is that you use more... Uh, mind skill and cleverness rather than the powers themselves so and oh. therefore you concluded that leo would win yes my con- my conclusion was that uh, uh because you do not know how to control your powers and you are a batman fan you so you would not want to kill batman you would basically not be able to fight at all because for the same reason that you described you everything would be fucked because you're overpowered well oddly enough uh two things here I do have to make a note that out of the nine canonical times those two have fought, uh, 
Batman's one only two. Secondly, I also have to to comment if you want an interesting Superman slash Batman story, there is a Elseworld story where Superman's rocket crash lands in Gotham mm-hmm. and is raised by the Waynes. So when the Waynes are killed in the alleyway, he becomes Batman with all oh. of Superman's powers. Okay, I have no. Okay, I, I, that's I, I, awesome. It, it's wild. Let me see if I can pull it up. Here. Elseworld sometimes just hits it out of the park. I, I only knew the story where. Oh, it's actually not Superman, but uh, uh, not Clark Kent or Ka- Kyle, but uh, General Zord manages to get his DNA in in the escape pod. And ah. uh, this one where you basically have Batman, who is not Bruce Wayne, but another character, and he's an actual vampire. Uh, oh, Red Rain. Yeah, Red Rain. Yeah. Then there's, the, then there's oh. the really shitty Elsewhere story where Selina Kyle becomes Batman, or has the or takes the job of Batman in the I, sense of she's the vigilante of of Gotham. And mm. Batman's a crazed killer, right? I think yeah, I, I, hate, got, I actually got I, that recently. I hate that one. <laughs> But actually, it wasn't Red Rain. I'm sorry. That was Gods and Monsters you're referring to, Max. Yes, yes. Yes. But no, the the story I'm referring to is called Speeding Bullet, and it's in several different collective series of Superman Elseworlds stories I recommend. And if we do talk about Superman, I'd recommend uh, All-Star Superman and, let's see, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow and God. I can't remember the last one, but it's a really good story, and it was uh, the art was done by Jim Lee. Hmm. Ah, Jim, you you are good at art, but yes. like, uh, yeah. So tr- okay. luckily, we don't have a lot of Discord questions, so these so, are going. So this will be good. Okay, and um, we speed through them. Chaka, yes. we can do it. From st- from sad student noises. Who saw August happen? Not me. I went to sleep on the fir- on the first and woke up on the twenty third. Anyway, if the wizard gave you a choice between getting rid of a really big zit on your left cheek or give you fifty bucks, how would you beat him up to make him do both? Let Sa- Max field the first Sa- one. Sa- Sa- thank you, Odie. Um, so get rid of a big zit or give me 50 bucks. How would I beat him up to do both? Uh, I threatened to pop the zit on him. Ew! See, it works instantly if Keyframe would be the wizard. Okay, next one, answer. Um, I would... I would <laughs> find a picture, embarrassing pictures of him in front and to show it to his wife. Okay. <laughs> Leo. I, look, well, the best the best beatings you can give are emotional ones. Oh, good point, good point. Anyway, yes, Leo? Okay, so what I would do is, number one, I, I wouldn't be concerned with the wizard removing the zit. I would have cut it off my face with my own blade. Uh, I'd take the 50 bucks because clearly he has no zit to deal with, and then I would just take him to Suplex City. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because so- of reasons. See, you, see, you, you, have to under- you have to understand, I am also a wizard. I am the muscle wizard, and I cast fist. Yes. It is very okay. effective. From Enigma Et, what is an iconic animated scene that you can't ever forget, be it good or bad? Mine is Zuka and Azula final fight from Avatar The Last Airbender because the music and cinematography is just pure amazement in and of itself. I agree with you there, Enigma. That was amazing. Uh, probably the... Uh, the fight between Samurai Jack and the Beetle Bots when he's protecting the Dog Kingdom in one of the first episodes of Samurai Jack because there's no talking or anything during it. It's all just pure, like, I think it's like a four minute long fight scene and it is amazing. Basically, any scene from Samurai Jack is an amazing, iconic animated scene. Actually, I would change that to the fight between the ninja in one of the episodes of Samurai Jack when it's like going from day to night. So Jack has to hide in the pure whiteness and the ninja hides in the in the black shadows. So the only times you see them is when they're intersecting into each other's universes and it looks amazing. Anyway, that's my answer. I'm still you, working. I'm still working on mine. Okay, what about you, Leo? I have a lot of them, but one of my favorites, and this, this isn't an action scene, but it's in the episode. What is it? Something at Crime Alley. Appointment at Crime Alley. In Batman the Animated Series at the very end, because the entire episode it's about Batman doing his yearly routine of visiting the site where his parents were shot. And instead of having to do that first and foremost, he has to do a lot of things to help the people of the community. 
And at the very end, he goes to the spot with Leslie Tompkins, and Leslie says to him, good people used to live in Crime Alley. And Batman's response was, good people still live in Crime Alley. As he bends down, and he puts the roses where his parents got killed, and Leslie comforts him, and there's a superimposed image of the newspaper when they got shot of her comforting Bruce as a child superimposed on him doing so now that he's an adult. And that sticks with me for two reasons. Uh, Number one, Batman at no point ever condemns the area where it happened. He just condemns the person. So Batman's statement, somebody who's gone through a lot of trauma, not just from the death of his parents, but also other things, acknowledging that good people can still live in what's considered a bad place, coupled with the fact that even somebody as fearsome and terrible as Batman still has people that love and care about him at his weakest points. These things really stick with me. So that's absolutely stuck with me ever since I saw it as a kid. Yeah. God, Batman, stop being so great when people <laughs> write you well. Uh, but okay, what, uh, yeah, about, I, what about you, Max? Come on. Okay, you grew up with cartoons. You I know. Find something. I, I, I know. I, I already came across some uh, multiple things, but it's probably not the ultimate answer, but I have to go with one well, answer. Uh, both of ours were just picking one that we really liked. So. Yeah, that's, that's true, but uh, none comes specifically to mind like an all time favorite. Um, but yeah, I. I don't want to go with Megamind again since I already used it as an escape answer earlier. <laughs> but uh, what I really like is the scene when the, the robots form his giant head and he's like, oh, you yeah. lack presentation and the flash. That is like, great. I mean, that I, is mean great. I mean, it even starts before that, like when the, when the clouds come in and you hear Welcome to the Jungle start playing the, 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 the instrumentals and then the space and then he... Ah, Damn it, now it, now it became my answer after all. Never mind, let's okay. move on to the next okay. question. <laughs> okay, um, so next question. Enigma, that was a great question. So, um, I failed as always with answering it, but the question was good. But no, the one from a and Y. I guess we can give a quick answer here. Uh, what are your thoughts on remakes? Mine is, one sim- mine is very simple, because it's the qu- answer I give oh everyone boy. who asks me. If you can tell something new with the story, go ahead. Because, cause, I mean, like, fucking... I am not someone who's, like, automatically hating on Disney remakes. I just always go in with a lot of caution because so many of them are shot for shot, like Lion King or Beauty and the Beast. However, then you have stuff like Aladdin or especially the Jungle Book movie, which actually does something new and doesn't try to just be the old one but live action the jungle book one is the best example because they actually take parts from mitt Coll- not mitt collings that's the animator um kipling's original book and does something but still adds elements of the original movie which is yes if you're going to do a disney jungle book remake actually use things from the source material that walt actively told them not to use so it's something new. Oh yeah, the whole thing with Jungle Book is that Walt went into the animation, the storyboards and writers, to put down Mick, uh, the original Kipling Jungle Book book and be like, see this book? Yeah, don't open it. Don't read it. Hmm. Yeah, because originally it was going to be more like the original book, but then Sword in the Stone didn't do that great, so they were like, no. <laughs> but yeah, so if you can do something new and interesting and you actually put heart behind it, I don't mind a remake. That's my opinion. Uh, Leo, your point? When it comes to remakes, um, my viewpoint is very simple for the most part. Go into the remake with an understanding, a real understanding of the material you are covering, the original intent and purpose of it, and go into it lovingly. Because we have, we've have, we've had situations with other remakes where people have gone in there trying to prove something or with, with actually a detest for the previous incarnation. A good example mm-hmm. is actually with uh, 1996's New Adventures of Johnny Quest. The first season writer hated Johnny Quest, despised the original. So his desire was to make a better version because the original sucked. And if you actually watch the first season, it's terrible. But when Lancelot Falk was put on the second season, a avid fan of the real event or the new or the original Johnny Quest, that's when it actually started to be a good show, well written, well understood. 
And we see this also play out in other more modern media. Uh, while a lot of people closer to my age give, like, say, the new She-Ra cartoon a lot of grief, I give it less so simply because I know the terms in which it was created. But you have to understand something like it before you can remake it, which is my issue with not only the new Thundercat series that's going to come out, but also the 2011 one. Because while they had an understanding of the shows, they didn't really grasp it. What they wanted to do was take the concept of it and... Aaron Sparrow said something very important that I think gets to the to the core of this. Aaron Sparrow is the guy who wrote the more recent Darkwing Duck comics from both Boom and Joe books. Mm-hmm. He said, when I am given a legacy character, an established character to write for, I do not see that as a chance to tell my stories with somebody's characters. I see it as a chance I see it as a chance to tell good stories with somebody else's characters. Mm-hmm. That's why he won't delineate from the original, say, Darkwing Duck formula and the things that made us love that cartoon. So that's the mentality you have to go into when it comes to a remake. My issue with the, the modern Disney remakes is animation is, number one, an underappreciated art form in general. Here's our underrated answer. All <laughs> yeah. uh, But when you try to supplant it with either a, a more sophisticated form of animation like 3D is or replace it all together by live action animation's purpose and its ability is to do anything mm-hmm. you can do anything with imagination if you can draw it it can be done mm-hmm. and you have robbed that art style of number one it's due credit and number two the effectiveness it has if you were to strip all of the MCU movies of any form of animation they have you would have about 20 minutes each movie of people standard awkwardly around a green screen If you are going to do it, put your heart and soul into it and let it be the medium it's supposed to be when it comes to animation. And that's something I feel we've lost. And with a lot of these adaptations, unfortunately, it's let's try to do a shot for shot remake in live action while missing why it was done in original 2D animation to begin with. So Mm -hmm. that's my take. If you're going to do it, do it properly. Understand the product you're working on and understand that these people who made it had their reason for it and understand why that is and go by that. That's, that's why I am also against major edits to people's creative visions so long as it's not done for a moral purpose. So that's my ultimate take. It's if you do it, you better do it right. And don't do it with a sense of, I'm going to make the, the original look bad in comparison. Like if I was to be handed the opportunity to make a new Thundercats series. I'm going to take everything Leonard Starr, Mike Jermican, Ted Wolf, and all these men put together, and I would do it step by step in the same formula they did, so I do not discredit these men who did the hard work for me. That's okay. my view. Okay, Max, you asked the question. Yes. Uh, so, how, how, first of all, how did I come up with the question? So there was a new uh, episode of Wisecrack about remakes. I put the link down below. Funny thing is, so they also brought up some uh, of the more detailed points that Leo just mentioned, with uh, especially when it comes to the Disney remakes, that making it too photorealistic takes away from what animation is there to do, being like unrealistic. Um, no, but uh, for me personally, because somebody somebody dropped another name earlier in it. Ducktales, yeah, I love oh, the new Ducktales remake. It's amazing. Uh, then again, DuckTales it's a reboot. Was able to it's a seamlessly, reboot. seamlessly put the Darkwing universe in the Ducktales universe because they still never were up. canonically in the same universe. Yeah, correct. It's, Cat Stones verified that. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. um, still haven't caught up to it. Shame on me. Uh, but. Um, yeah. Neither <laughs> yeah. have I. So. Yeah. But 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 yeah. In general, I'm also uh, I'm not against remakes by default. I uh, many video, uh, many movies or games or whatnot I really like and love are remakes at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, it's really those soulless remakes. So it probably goes into a similar direction that Leo brought up. With you need to actually want to do it and you need to, to, to know what's going on there. Um, you need to know your material, not just copy-paste what somebody else already did. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the long and short of, of my take. Like, make it worse by bring something new to the table, which goes in the direction that Key already said as well. So, hey, joy of being the last one. Okay. The joy of being the moderate, but like... Um, also true. Yeah, so 
We are now at our favorite section yeah. of the show that we have still not put in our uh, awkward video. That we, we, we really need, need to do to. a re remake of it. But um, at this point, at this point, we can wait until 2020 and do one in new design and everything for the 2020 season. Yeah, but okay. So the Mad Lad, who is also a wolf, asks. Mm. I really should not have drunk an energy drink before this. Okay. <laughs> I have gathered three groups of the most disgusting and deplorable people on the planet Earth and the internet, but mostly the internet. That's just this podcast. Um, fuck, marry, kill, a brony, a furry, or a weeb. I, Choose very carefully. Oh, Leo, I'm so sorry. I'm all three of them. It's me too. <laughs> what do I do? Do I just, do I marry, fuck, and kill myself? I feel like I already do that. Uh, but yeah, may maybe getting some fresh view on it. Leo, fuck, marry, kill, a wee, uh, 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 a weeb, a furry, a bro. What was it? A wee, fu furry, a, a brony, brony, yeah. a furry, and a weeb. All right. Um, I refuse the first one simply due to the fact that, again, I'm married. And as such, uh -huh. that goes against my Meta moral values. Okay. With, same with the married one. And as far as kill, it depends. If they're dumb enough to come at me or to try to harm my family, any of the three would be suitable. So this is... This is... <laughs> This is not how the game works. Metaphorically fucking. Metaphorically marrying. First, it's not metaphoric, it's hypothetical. <laughs> okay, hypothetical if I'm forced into this. Yes, no you are. I would intentionally tear into my stomach and disembowel myself to kill myself. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> See, here's, this is the game, and here's Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, I did not expect, to be t TVH, I did not expect any answer less than this, and I'm <laughs> thoroughly entertained and pleased, so. Uh, I guess I'll go next. Uh, fuck, Mary kill, a brony, a furry, or a weeb? Let's see. Um, what mercy would I give the world of whom I kill? Uh, guess I'll kill the weeb. Oh, boy. Because... Well, no, the thing is, I think I'll kill the weave because there are so many stands that are anime-based that are very dangerous and constantly doxing people that make the furry and brony community look like saints. Hmm. So, okay. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know the character of this weeb. So in my world, if I'm picking the kill, it's one of those. Yeah, people. obviously. It's the, the weeb. A uh, weeb um, as a stereotype weeb. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll marry... <laughs> See, now I'm stuck between two bads. Um, because I don't... <laughs> There's no gold... Wait, I can marry a furry because furries have a lot of disposable income. <laughs> oh my god. She's always you know, taking the gold I, digger I, I, answer. My, my, get, my goof is that I usually pick the gold digging thing as marriage. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll marry the furry because here's the thing. In theory, you fuck the person you marry, because because uh, furries know a lot of things, a lot of things, and that takes time to learn all those things. So marriage is like an investment of time to learn. Um, and then I guess I'll fuck the brony, because fuck bronies, man, am I right? Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> Yeah! Okay, okay, what am I going to say? Um... Let's see. So, um, I guess kill the brony because the show is over and BronyCon is over and it's a mercy kill at this point. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? Keep going. I'm not giving you the satisfaction of knowing my an of giving you an answer. Uh. Uh. Please okay. pick your fuck so I can do my usual thing of trying to make you feel bad for your choice. Oh, I will. I already wrote myself in a very, very uncomfortable corner there. Once so you're again. either going to fuck the uwu or you're going to fuck the uh. uh, yeah, You see, here, here's, here's the thing. I feel dirty. Here's the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I made I made Leo go. I feel dirty. I feel I proud of myself. <laughs> so you see, here's the thing: furries and weeps are both perfs. However, so, so, so there is a lot to fuck there. Um, however, with the weeps, there is more high school shit going on. 
Which is not better for Mary Sizer. What was that thing that it was like your first, your first like initial to the to like your birthday, and you were like the lolly and the male equivalent of a lolly. <sighs> so it's so it's like, hey, maybe that's just a match made in yeah, maybe uh, but, in heaven. But here's the thing: I really don't want to be married to the weep. So. <laughs> no, they don't bathe. They don't bathe. Uh, Next chat. <sighs> what do you mean, Sendai? Oh, but I also don't want to hear this in I bed. Do. Oh no. Oh you're, no, you're, you're I, I should have. Assuming, assuming he's going to get some cutesy wootsy woo woo instead of uh, I, I somebody who looks like freaking Kenshiro. I, sh I, I, I really should have cued. Should not have, I should have kept the kill, shouldn't I, for somebody yeah, else? No taxis, honey. <laughs> no taxis, taxis. Okay, the brony is still killed. And then you oh, have the furry but... marriage, which is, which you know, maybe you guys can have a nice fur suit wedding. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay, 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 okay. I found my answer. Okay, so good. I will fuck the furry because. Mm -hmm. Effer, you're already halfway there, and you know they're, they're up for it. And with the Weep, there is so much anime, new coming out every season. So if you marry the Weep, you have something to, to, to do together and watch together for the rest of your life. This was disturbingly wholesome for me. I'm sorry. The thing is, is that I just imagined that the divorce papers would be like reason for divorce, showin versus shoujo, which oh. is better. <laughs> One Piece versus Naruto. <laughs> hmm, that's a tough uh, call, by but, the way. Are we talking but, yeah. anime or manga? Oh, God. <laughs> would you marry the weeb that actually read through every issue of One Piece? Better than the weeb who watched through it. You know, as we're having this debate, this discussion, Leo, I have to ask, how are you feeling right now? Well, considering the fact that I go to anime conventions to host panels about old stuff, I'm kind of used to the whole anime thing. So uh, I just gather my stuff after that, and I go home to detox. So I, I've, I've dealt with worse, thankfully. You've but, yes, watched uh, that in, you watched that instructional video twice. You, you <laughs> should know what I was leading into. God yes. damn it. Well, he already yeah. didn't play along with the fuck Mary Kill rules. Why should he play along with that rule? He wants this show to go on forever. He wants to take Emerald Sting of the No, longest. no, no. <laughs> I, I, I get I get what you're getting at, don't worry. Um, well he, if you want if you want to end on this, uh, I'll explain to you a little story here. When I go when I go to when I went to BronyCon, I, I met several people like you two. But also I, I went to go and I met Jasper Pie, Joey. Hmm. And when oh. I walked up to him to shake his hand, he looked at me like I was going to mug him and started backing off. And that was awkward. A and Y and Key say hi to the people in the chat. The memes are seen on this live stream as they talk about random crap. It's time for awkward guys. It's the awkward. It's the awkward. Random guests and funny gags on the awkward It's the awkward. Guests. It's the awkward. Artwork and analysis, whoa, whoa, whoa. which you do not want.